<laughs> it's a good no start. No. Everyone <laughs> wants to see that. Everyone wants to see Tanya, the yeah. camera operator. Camera Welcome operator. to day three of PRGE. We're back in the Atari Age booth uh, to talk to some devs. Today is Dev Day. Uh, we're going to be starting the Atari Age booth. We're going to go over to Audacity. We're going to go to Champ Games. We're going to go to Songbird. We're going to go to uh, John Hancock. We're going to talk to a lot of people. We're just going to keep it rolling and keep moving. But first, oh my God, we have a very <laughs> special, special guest surprise that we did not plan on. It's Joe Grant, Hello, who Internet. made Ultra Scuzzy Side and yeah. Scuzzy Side. Back in 2001. Yeah, this is Old like school. a vintage homebrew game now. <laughs> it really <laughs> like, is. Like and, we were, um, you were just beforehand calculating. Yeah. Is this game older? Is the time span between this game and now longer than the time span between yeah Atari back like, old Atari? Yeah, like when Atari was actually a thing to when yeah. I made the game. And I was just also calculating, like, this. I wrote this game, 2001, so basically half my life ago, yes. I wrote this. And, <laughs> and it was like, maybe the, there was a handful of homebrew games at the time. Um, I don't even know if there were 10. Yeah, because uh, they started in 95, the first yeah. it was like Ed, There was Edtris. Edtris was, a, I think, the first official yeah. like, game game. Yeah. There was, like, utilities and stuff before yeah. that. Yeah, and I think Pierre, Pierre, Pierre there was um, Oystra. There was a couple. Yes. Yeah, well, you know, because so, we played them all. So just a handful. A so handful. you're super OG homebrew. <laughs> yeah. So what was development like back then? What kind of tools did you have? How did you test your games? How yeah. did you even play your games before they got on cartridge? Yeah, so this like this really was really an extension of what I was doing day to day, which was uh, embedded system development, so engineering. I've always loved computers, and I grew up as a hacker. Yeah. Uh, and if now I'm, I'm a professional hacker now, and at the time I wasn't yeah. exactly sure where, where I was going, but. Developing for the 2600 was really no different than developing on any other type of microcontroller based system at the time. Like right. the tools were not great. <laughs> uh, you're dealing with, you know, assembly language and cycle counting and stuff that you would have to do for regular development. So for me, it was just a way to do what I love to do, but make a game out of it. Yeah. And I was inspired by, I think it was on the Atari Age forums, or maybe it was. A, Maybe, maybe digital press forums? Yeah, Atari Age was like just being yeah. called Atari Age in 2001. Yeah. So m maybe it was digital press. It was some some forum where yeah. some of the homebrew devs were like sharing tricks and like, hey, can you review this yes. piece of code or I need to save some cycles? So it was this very organic kind of fun, small communal kind yes. of environment. And the, my development environment, I was just looking at pictures, was my PC and I had, I was using like Z26. Yeah, for the assembler, um, and I had a supercharger connected to an actual Atari. Right. And then I was loading the code in over the supercharger, and then testing it on on all our, on actual hardware. Because really, that was the only way to be, play the games live in a development environment is to have the StarPass supercharger, right? Yeah. To instantly load to it instantly and see load. if it yeah. worked. Yeah, and you're not burning EEPROMs all the time. And I think, <laughs> well, maybe Z26 was the emulator. There was, yeah, was, there was em some was emulation. Emulator. Um, it was before Stella, right? Yeah, it was yeah. before Stella. Like, there was some emulation, but not like now, I don't think, where you could view registers and step oh, through code and debug. there's so many great tools now. So this yeah. was just pure, like, so whatever the whatever the assembler was, not Z26, whatever it was, yeah. load the code, load it in, test it, go back, make code changes. But it actually worked out well because you could just do it very, very quickly. Yeah. And I liked having it on real hardware. Yes, Because the course. emulator is like, if you're actually doing tricks with assembly language or something that's unless like hardware specific. Unless it's a hundred percent some of the newer tricks wouldn't yeah. that didn't exist say in classic Atari twenty six hundred games. That's right. It would trip right. it up. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I liked so I just felt better testing it that way. Um, and so the first one I created was Scuzzy Side, which I think is yeah. I don't remember if you played Scuzzy Side or Ultra Scuzzy Side on the I screen. Can, I can't remember yeah. which one exactly, but, but one of them. Was, yeah, yeah, so Scuzzy Side was, I basically made 50 of them for Classic Gaming Expo 2001 in yeah. Las Vegas, which is this this one here, and they were hand, hand numbered, all hand assembled um, and signed, and I made these with 
the color printer of the company that I was working at the time, because color printers were super expensive, made my own circuit boards, burned, my, burned, burned the EEPROMs, put them in, built them, and I was like, I'm just gonna sell 50, because it's just, you know, retro yep. gaming at the time was a smaller hobby. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not even gonna sell 50 of them. Right, because uh, people would be like, oh, I don't remember that game. Right back then, yeah. they wouldn't even know what a homebrew was. No, it was so <laughs> new. So it was like, and it was a much smaller environment. So people who knew were like, I want to buy this and collect it. Yeah. Um, so I ended up selling through all 50 and like nice. did one in the auction and raised some money for some other things, which oh, that's was great. really cool of like yeah. being able to create something and it help other people, you know, by raising money for things. So that was fun. And then after CGE, I did another limited edition run for Philly Classic 3, yeah. which somebody had contacted me at the show about to yeah. autograph one, and I'm that like, I haven't great. seen that in forever. And they were trying to verify if it was even yeah. a real one. Yeah. Because it's so old, there would be like knockoffs of people yeah. like, oh, this is an old one. Well, now. there's not a lot of documentation about it because it was old, like, there wasn't marketing around it, and it was just a very, like, Again, a much more niche world. So yes. he wanted to check like the provenance, and I was like, "That's my handwriting. I signed that. We made these labels." Um, and then we ended up making when Atari Age took over. They started manufacturing Scuzzy Side as one of their home brews as yeah. the environment, as the homebrew kind of world was getting bigger. Yeah. But then Kurt Vendel was working on the Atari Flashback and the Flashback Two, and we were trying to get Scuzzy Side into the Flashback Two. The game didn't make it, but some of my code made it in. Yep. So basically when I when we were trying to get it into Flashback 2, I went from SCSI side to Ultra SCSI side, which is basically some modifications to the game, a title screen. Um, SCSI side is a paddle game, and Ultra SCSI side I wanted to support joysticks because the flashback at first was joystick only. Right. Um, so all that made it into the Flashback 2 was the code that I have to automatically detect if you have a joystick or a paddle plugged in, which oh, I think is pretty cool. That, that is a pretty um, cool And I think I was looking at some register with the fire button and it could determine which bit was set. Uh, but it was something that I guess they didn't want to create their, themselves. So they took that code right. and my name's in the manual, which <laughs> oh, is pretty rad. Like, that's pretty cool. A nice little surprise. Um, and then, so Ultra Scuzzy Side is like the more professional, you know, Albert made a, made a full manual for it. And we did a, a label creation contest on Atari Age by that point, 2005. And there's like, you know, a young, a young Joe Grand, unrecognizable, uh, completely unrecognizable, <laughs> hiding with, behind the spoon, especially with the spoon on your nose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, which was a long way from like the hand printed, you know, manual still of the original slick. one. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was just, it was just a good time. And I'm, yeah. I'm amazed that people still. Um, come up to you and get signatures. To, yeah, and, that want to play that game, and it's awesome to see like all these other games. It's like yeah, this what's exponential your, growth. What's of, your reaction to coming from way back in 2001 yeah. being an innovator of homebrew, yeah. and now coming to see this massive booth at I'm Atari blown away, Age, blown and away. the num number of back catalog titles and new titles oh, every yeah. year. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing, and like I've been coming to shows since then. Yeah. I haven't made anything new, but I still go to the show. I still have a, a very small collection of things. Yeah. Um, but for me, I just still love the technology, and I love seeing what people have done. And the the quality of the games, yeah, ridiculously amazing. Um, I think, I, I imagine, I don't know if it's true, but I just imagine more and more people sharing the tricks and reviewing yes. each other's code and helping and, and, and having this communal thing where everybody can kind of recognize their own visions of what they want yeah. with help from other people and having better technology for development, yeah, easier ways to, like your circuit boards, right? Like getting yeah. circuit boards with flash on them or whatever. Um, it's really, yeah, it's amazing to see. And it's like the system is just never going to go away. And have you ever been tempted to make another game, a newer game? I'd have been, you had ideas? And... Yeah, like I thought about doing a Game Boy game yeah. at one point. Um, but. <laughs> I just have so many projects going on that this was yeah. like, this was really a labor of I love how and, it is. and yeah. fascinating and it's like I maybe and I'm a horrible gamer also that's the thing it's like I can <laughs> write the game but I'm horrible at playing it and okay. playing anybody's games um, I'll never say never yeah but uh, maybe, maybe one day maybe one day oh that's awesome yeah. well it was awesome talking to you yes I you never well. thought this would happen I know. but uh, it's <laughs> it's, it's great well. that it uh, coincided and you're able to uh, 
come on live. Yeah, very cool. And I do want to mention, I know we mentioned this yesterday when we ran into each other, that your live stream on Twitch of playing Scuzzy Side yes. was my first time attending any sort of like Twitch live stream. I think I even had oh, to sign great. up for an account to get on the chat. <laughs> well, that's and, great uh, that you're able to it was watch very cool. it. That was, awesome. was really fun. So yeah, thanks for doing these and um, oh, thanks for everybody for watching. Well, and uh, Thanks for being I'm one of go. the original people. Of course. Of, uh, I, mean, I didn't know games. it was going to be a thing. So No, it's, uh, that's, that's yeah, what happens cool. back in the day. So. Now i got to go catch up on all of your other videos. To, like, oh, well, good luck on that. There's keep, hundreds. Yeah, watch a lot of them. <laughs> but it'll educate you on what's new what's, out yeah, here exactly. and what's, the, it's just what's amazing. great. It's totally amazing. Well, thanks so much, Joe. Yes. It was great talking with cool. you. You too. And uh, we'll see you online. Yeah, have fun in the rest of the show yeah. also. You bet. Bye-bye. Yeah, cool. So that was amazing. Now we're going to head over to Mike Letow and check out his brand new game, which we did uh, preview on right. the show really recently. That's right. It is Pop Box Arena. Yeah, you can hold Hello that. There. That makes it easy, actually. All right. Sure. There we go. So we've got Mike Letow with Pop Box Arena. We played on the show four player Quad Tari. That's right. With one joystick with right one now. With one joystick. <laughs> no quad right here. It shows the importance of trying to uh, coach the lowest common denominator. <laughs> That's everybody's right. going to have a Quad Tari. Everybody's That's going right. to have two joysticks. But you've coded it so you can play one player. You can That's play correct. two, three, four, That's correct. Or zero. Or zero. Zero players. You could, you could actually. So it's totally hands free it's gaming. It's totally hands free. <laughs> uh, that makes it really good for debugging because if the computer plays by itself, you can see you know where it crashes. Where, uh, That's you know, true, you're, you're, uh, and what how the AI is doing as yes. well, playing against other AI. That's right. Because if you're playing one player, the AI, all three AIs don't go after you. No. They're all fighting evenly against each right. other. That's correct. So, um, was this something you wanted to do and get into Quatari and uh, this is your first Quatari game? Is, this is my first Quatari game. Yeah. Uh, with each new game, I really like to uh, learn new things. Uh, I like yeah. to learn in a you know a low stress, low pressure environment. Uh, you <laughs> yeah. know, obviously, this is still in a uh, a beta state. Uh, the fact that it's not complete, uh, I'm not bringing it. Atari Age is not going to go bankrupt. You know, this <laughs> right. is not 1983. This is not the release. That's yes. right. They're not pushing things out the door for Christmas. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So and the nice thing about the, uh, the ability to do uh, demos at, at uh, Port Richard Game Expo is that yes. you get a lot of public feedback. Uh, yes. And, and uh, a lot of people play it. And you know, a couple more things that you haven't really. Uh, closer. Oops. Uh, there's a lot. Uh, they come up with uh, and find a lot of things that you wouldn't have necessarily uh, discovered. Like, for example, uh, you know, you and Erlen, when you did the uh, the preview for the show, yeah. Uh, you you know said you know maybe we need a reverse a reverse key. Yeah, because I got kind of stuck in a wall. I mean, you afterwards said, oh, just press the gas and you'll yes. bounce off of it. But. There's the intuition, and while you're watching other people play, you watch us play, and you kind of have to factor that in, even when you have like um, right. a grand plan of how the game's supposed to be played. Right. That may not be how it's going to be played. Exactly. And you have to give in a bit sometimes. That's right. right. So yeah, I mean, so obviously you want to make a game that is playable for everybody, that's intuitive for everybody. Um, you know, one of the other things I saw was uh, during the player select screen. Uh, you and Errol are like, when is it going to start? And uh, yes. so I was thinking, okay, so I need to make a little timer bar that sort of ticks down until it's yes. ready to go. Yes. Um, but one of the things that I did and that, want to that's kind of what on Ducks Away as well. If you wanted to look at a Quad Tari game, they have he has uh, four players as well signing up, uh -huh. just like you do. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so one of the things that I did, because uh, I, 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 you know, I love interfaces, and I love making things easy to use, couch compliant, that sort of thing. So, uh, for example, when you choose, you can see that your color lights up when you press the button. Yes. Because when you have four people, it's like, well, which one am I? And so if you press the button and it lights up a little bit, you can say, oh, that's me. That's super handy. Yeah. And you'll know when you're joining in, oh, I'm blue. I press right. the button. Yeah. That's right. And correct. then you're not like, Wondering, oh my God, am I yellow? Am I blue? Am I red? That's right. Here you can, oh, so you can play. <laughs> so uh, tell us a little bit about the mechanics of this. Okay, so uh, you know, my first game, Electro Ball. Uh, you know, I really love the uh, bumper car physics, yes. and I really wanted to uh, expand on that, and uh, you know, also also take it to the next level. I mean, Electro Ball. You only had two players. This one, I wanted to do four. Um, and so, uh, 
uh, you know, I, I and I also wanted to uh, like an, an homage to some of the driving games of the past, Sprint Master, Indy 500. Yeah. Uh, you know, Ivan Stewart's Off Road Racing, those those type of games. Um, and then also, um, I wanted to explore things like uh, flicker management. Uh, yes. You know, Todd Fry did a really good talk some years ago about how you hack. to uh, look into uh, software collisions. The yeah. 2600 is famous for doing you know, hardware sprite-based collisions. It's very handy, but sometimes it's not quite enough. That's right. right. And especially if you're flickering between two sprites, then yes. uh, they're never going to really touch. Yeah, so you'd have to do some sort of round robin, one, two, one, three, one, right. four, so you get the collision. But then you're on the fourth frame, and then depends how fast they're going, right. they may be off somewhere That's else. That's right. So what, what I've found is that, uh, so I, I did have to take a lot of shortcuts with this game in its current state. Yeah. Uh, check, uh, you know, I think I check the car collisions every fourth frame, but then you get a case where the car, if you're, if you're unchecking, continue to move each other to improve on that. Uh, and you said I, you were looking maybe at some acceleration yes. for, the, for the game, some CDFJ. Yes, CDFJ. Actually, one, one of the nice things about being at Port Richard Game Expo, John Champo is you know, a few rows down. So That's I went right. down and talked to him about it, and you know we're, we're going to talk. He's going to help you know show me the ways. That's uh, awesome. I'm, yeah, I'm also looking at, uh, do, uh, for now, I'm making a PAL 50 version as well. Because okay. with PAL 50, you get like 310. Uh, yeah lines instead of 262 and actually with right now I have you know uh, car, all the car collisions all the missile car and missile collisions uh, there and I have like 16 lines to go so I was also going to implement a uh, uh, car playfield check uh, using the algorithm that Oscar Toledo G did in his mm. book mm. very handy yeah uh, <laughs> very handy uh, yeah because I want to try to get it so that all everything is is nice and crisp Okay. I, I, you know, I, I love it when the, the cars bounce against each other. I like it when they you know, bounce against the walls. Yes. It has a nice, Rather than then like go into the walls that's right. and then jump out again. That's right. Yeah. I was, if I wasn't going to do that, I was going to do you know some sort of like you know imitation. It's on purpose. Right. The, the bug is a feature actually. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, if you could do it better, then obviously that's the, the way it is. And yeah. so you know, I want to. I just uh, what I'm looking to do. I just want to develop it as fully as I can. That yep. means going to CGFJ. That's a, that's a new technique I can learn. And, that's right. And, and like you said, you like learning new yeah. stuff, like the Quatari. So and, and uh, you know, the, the homebrew community has done such a wonderful thing at creating additional hardware. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the plus card, save yeah. key. Uh, yeah. all, all that sort of stuff. And, and they're very supportive. Like you said, John Shampoo will help yeah. you out. Uh, Daryl Spice Jr. Yeah. will help you out as well. That's right. The, the, the wonderful, I, I really love this community of Fort Sensitive. Everybody uh, comes together. You know, we're, we're, we're all kind of battling the machine. You yeah. know, we're rooting for each other. And, you know, it's just such a positive experience. It is. So that's excellent. So what is your, this is just the first glimpse at it. Were you trying to get this ready for PRGE so uh, you could show it off or was it coincidence? Uh, no, I, I was trying uh, to uh, get it ready for PRGE. Um, you know, I was finding things where uh, I put the C, I, I had all the CPUs play each other, screen started rolling like crazy and it's like, oh, I, uh, I ran out of good, you know, logic to even sooner than I thought. Uh, so I, I did. I did some shortcuts where I was like, well, if I run out of, of time, then maybe I won't check for the missile collisions, or maybe I won't read the joysticks. But not quite enough. Not quite yet. So we have a question from the chat. What drove him to choose a smiley face in favor of a different character? That's from Rod Kessler. So the, <laughs> so the smiley face in the middle of the arena. And I know you're going to be doing multiple arenas. Uh -huh. So where's the smiley face come uh, from? Th this was, I, I just, as, uh, like with Electro Ball, you know, the arena was just this big clear area. And so okay. I wanted something in the middle to, uh, you know, demonstrate that it's not you're not just looking at the top or the sides but you're actually looking at the play field itself right and you know rather than have a skull or you know, something <laughs> scary you know something nice it's, it's a nice smiley face so it is you know, a nice who, smiley who's, face. who's gonna be you know scared of a nice it's a smiley fun face. game right yeah, that's yeah. right so um, how many arenas where are you thinking of putting in the game so at, so at least a couple more uh, i wanted to uh we'll have one where the smiley face is there I wanted to have one where there's like little tiny 
pylons uh, okay. right there. Yep. Uh, maybe ones with some some uh, teeth on there. Let's yep. get reverse going because obviously we don't want cars to get stuck in there. Um, and then, you know, I'm kind of open for suggestions. Uh, oh, nice. I, yeah, and, and so... You have a design contest that's, that's for, right. and win that's a right. cartridge or something. That's right. And uh, presently, uh, it, it's set up to do mirror. So everything would have oh, to be okay. mirror on either side. That makes it a lot easier. Yeah, I mean, a lot more cycles you have that's available right. for yourself. Now, of course, if you go to CDFJ or CDFJ Plus, that completely opens everything up. Yeah. And it's not a racing game. No. It's a, a demolition derby right. game. So there's no laps or anything. You no. just start and go for it the other car. It is just pure chaos. And <laughs> the, the, the last one with their battery wins. What? Oh, okay. It's fine. Yeah, I just, just say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so what is your development time frame? Is there any time frame or when you're uh, right done? Right now, it's, 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 when I, it's actually when I'm done. Yeah, uh, and that's how it should be. Yeah. There's no I, pressure from Al. There's no right. pressure from anyone. That's right. I, I don't, I mean, Atari isn't going to go under if I don't get this finished. Which <laughs> exactly. Is a There's big no, load off my, are you going to cause the next crash I for Atari? Not. I hope <laughs> Oh, no. Um, you know, I do like to do, uh, you know, my, my goal is to do one game a year. Yeah. Uh, technically, my previous game, Catch, is my game for 2024. Yeah. So I'm going to target 2025. Okay. Uh, and That's a good goal. Yeah. And if I don't get it in time for next year's PRG, then 2026. Yeah. Yeah. No pressure. Well, it was awesome talking with you. Thank you. And uh, great to be able to be here with you That's and right. show off your new game. That's right. And it'll be posted on the forums probably tomorrow. Oh, excellent. So everybody else can now beta test it. That's and, right. Uh, make a list of wish a That's wish right. list for Give you. Feedback. Yeah. Well. Great talking with you. Talking with Thank you. you so much, Mike. Thank you. And uh, we'll catch you later. Okay. So we're going to go over now to Dave Marley with his game Frazzled. Let's surprise him. Let's sneak up on him. Oh, he saw us. Damn it. <laughs> saw you coming. Hey, Dave. How's it going? Hey, doing, doing, doing good. Thanks. So let's get which, in the frame. There, this is good. Oh, here we go. So... We're uh, here with your brand new release. This is actually released. Yes. And out on yes. cartridge, people out can cartridge. buy it here at the expo. Exactly. So, tell us a little bit about Frazzled and uh, right. the motivation behind it and making this type of game, action puzzle mix of game. Uh, yeah, well, it's based on, you, you remember the little Merlin handhelds from back in the 70s? The lights that, out, the, right? Yeah, yeah, the lights out type game. Yeah. Um, I actually about 20 years ago I had a job. I was a ten. Yeah. My boss got arrested. Oh and boy. I, I was uh -oh. left on my own. Yeah. And I did nothing all day, so I started making games using uh, VBA, using the forms in Excel and Access and whatnot. Oh. Okay. Because no one was giving me any work and no one paid attention to me. <laughs> Time so, for games. Yeah, I, I created a game based on that Merlin game. And I always thought that would go good on an Atari. Yeah. Uh, so this is it. Um, Let's talk about maybe the theme of it. You've got a lot of, of characters and a disco ball. Lot, and yes. Kind yes, of a disco yes. floor as well. Yeah, exactly. I just had this image in my head one night of this sort of 3D perspective. And, and thought it would fit this game perfectly. And you got the unicorns, which uh, my I was looking for a protagonist. My wife loved unicorns. She yep. had this stuffed unicorn that she just loved, so we made him the protagonist. Oh, that's awesome. Um, the antagonist, a red guy called Mr. Grumpy, <laughs> actually showed up in a dream. Oh, I, I, I must have been not? working on this too hard, and it, it showed up in a dream, and he came walking out like, I gotta remember this. Well, it's a, it's and, it's a kind of an homage to old style yeah. uh, arcade games in the '80s that were just completely nonsensical. So yeah, why not exactly. use inspiration from dreams? Exactly. And you're you're right. It looks like a disco floor. Yeah. So I was looking for a bonus round. Or dance. Put the disco. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And and so the the aim of the game is to mirror literally what's yes. on the top on the bottom using the techniques of the lights out game but it's not only it. that it's not pure puzzle game so maybe talk a little bit about the dangers and bonuses that come oh, on sure. the screen yeah well when i when i made that game 20 years ago i was doing that at, at that job 
my game started to spread around the office. Yeah. <laughs> and this one in particular, people had trouble with. They couldn't figure it out. So I had to put in little extras to help them along. And they made their way over to this game. You got little flashing pods that come out. One of them will put some wild cards on the board, which make it easier to solve the puzzle. You got others that slow down the, the timer. This little red dot that's on the bottom here, if you hop on that, yeah. the computer itself will try and solve the puzzle for a few seconds. Oh, that's so nice. It, it will bail you out. <laughs> yeah, if it's, you're having some trouble. If you're having some trouble, yeah. Because I know I had a little trouble playing the game because I, I, I didn't watched, know that. Yes. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god. Whenever I can't play a game well on the stream, I'm so embarrassed. But I had a cheat sheet, I think on the second go around for it, which helped out a lot. Uh, with the ways to do lights out, all the different techniques. Yeah. And, and I'm glad you brought that up because when this is available in the Atari Age store, we're going to include a cheat sheet. Oh, that's I, I drew out uh, all the patterns I could think of. Oh, that's good. And we're going to make a book all. Yeah. PRG. Yeah, it's, it's always a rush, right? Yeah, so, so Deadlines. If you did, first of all, if you bought one here at PRG, thank you. <laughs> and later on, when we get an Atari H store, maybe bug out. And he <laughs> might, right. might send you a poster. Yeah. Uh, There's always bonuses after yeah, PRG. Yeah. That... Or you can always buy an, another one yes, just to get right. the poster. One yeah. for you, one for your friend. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So now that this is out, um, are there any ideas for future games that you oh. have percolating that have risen oh, yes. to the top? Yeah, yeah, I've got. A lot of ideas. <laughs> That's good. It's, it's, it's some developers are like, oh no. Yeah, yeah it, um, I'm working on some other non Atari crap. Okay. Want to get that out of the way. Yeah. I figure maybe around the new year I'll start on the next one. Okay. Next one's going to be a, a shooter with a two player co op um, possibilities. Okay, that's right up my alley there. And, and then there's going to be a little weird bison themed game. <laughs> oh, really? And uh, I got another shooter planned after one. And okay. then a sequel to Mr. Yo Yo I just came up with. Nice. So I'm, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get that idea technically on the Atari. It's going to do <laughs> some weird stuff. Sometimes it takes stuff. a while. Some, yeah, it might come to you in a dream. It, it might, but that's why I'm pushing that one off to like fourth yeah. or fifth down line. Yeah, excellent. But yeah, the shooter and the bison theme game, hopefully I can get one or both as a demo by next year's PRG. Oh, great. Um, the goal is to have them both ready within two years. Okay. Uh, I, I want, in order to get all these ideas out, i got to cut down on the development time a bit. So I'm, <laughs> yeah. not, I'm not getting any younger. That's right. And yeah, we, yeah. We, I often do that in my head. How many years do I have left and how much exactly. is on my to-do exactly. list and my projects? Yeah, yeah. yeah. i got, I got a, a dozen ideas written out. I'm like, if I take two years apiece, <laughs> oh boy. I mean, come on. Yeah. I'm in my 50s. It's, it's, do the math. It's not yeah. going to work it's out. It's not good math either. Yeah, yeah. yeah the eyesight's going. i got to yeah. finish these fast. <laughs> Jeez. So yeah, our faculties. Oh, we're, no. We're, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to make the games a little simpler as we go. Yeah. Hopefully get the next two out within two years and go for it. Excellent. Well, it was great talking yeah. with you. Good seeing you guys. And uh, good luck with the game. Thank I'm you. sure you've been standing around watching people play and seeing yeah. how well they do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. They, <laughs> it's, it's not... A, an immediately intuitive game. A lot of people will drop it after a few seconds, which is unfortunate. Yeah. But every now and then, someone will, will come here and give it an honest attempt and try and interact with those people as they come along, give them a little help. Oh, that's good. Uh, they they seem to enjoy it. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from people that have played. Okay. Well, that's great. Well, thanks a lot, Dave. Sure. Thank and you. Um, uh, good luck with your new games. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. See you around. So. Um, I know there was a question about. Uh, oh. I don't know if they can hear me. I just uh, wanted here. to, yeah, I just wanted to say that I can see the upload speed sometimes drops, and oh. that might impact the quality of the stream. There's not much we can do about that. Not really. No. I mean, let's see what it's broadcasting it's, at right it's now. It's perfect right now. Oh, yeah. But, but during some, I, I do notice it drops. So you'll have to Sorry. bear with us if it happens. I think it's just the fact that there's so many people at this event and we're streaming and. Probably yeah, it's getting it, a little overloaded. And people are saying there might be sync issues, but if there is, just I don't know, reconnect and maybe it'll be better. Yeah. It's it's hard for us to do anything yeah. to correct it because there's no tools, there's no restart, start. Topo said that yeah, it will resync it. If oh we good. Go out in. But okay. Just, just so people. So let's. Uh, 
take a look around here. Oh, I want to get this on camera. Lee, 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 oh, yeah, Lee, yeah, yeah, Lee. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got to show this. Okay. You, you, you're not you're not here developing and showing off a game, but you no. got something special. Yep, yep. I, I have you got. one too, by the way. <laughs> oh, one of these, yes. Yeah. But you got the other some... one, right? I have the other one. This is the right channel. Works. You have the left channel. Yeah. Works. So. Mine does too. Yeah. So they're matching there. Yeah. Like left channel, right channel. Yeah. So uh, we were just at a panel yep. of this gentleman. Yep. And uh, you just recently got this amazing piece of hardware that I want yeah. that you're going to sell to me. No. Um, <laughs> this is the Atari Video Music Machine. Yes. And it displays, it's a, like, it's a music visualizer. One of the first visualizers. Yeah. You know, the old Winamp plugins yeah. or uh, dancing lights. Yep. And it you doesn't just, do much. No, it doesn't do much, but it looks beautiful. It looks cool. And it's very, very 70s. Yeah, they with, only made it for one year. With the four shades of brown on the front. Yeah. For, the, for the buttons. And uh, Nolan, when he saw it, he started laughing. And he really <laughs> geeked out over it. And confirmed a few things. They, oh, ne they yes. never made a PAL version because it didn't sell. Oh, okay. So there's, there's no PAL version. They only made it for a couple of months. Oh, wow. It is one of, I think, according to what we were talking about, the few pieces that actually had real wood panels as opposed to the oh, laminate panels. Oh, did they change it? Yeah. Well, oh. they as Atari hardware goes. Yeah. These shipped with real wood panels because they were for hi-fi systems. Everyone right. knows the wood grain on like the heavy sixes, but it's all laminate, like right. sticker, right? Yeah. So real wood. But what was really interesting, he said, the he thinks the reason it didn't take was, and he took the blame for it. He yeah. said, I didn't think about the fact that hi-fi systems back then were in a different room from the television. Oh. Yeah, they were because there was no yeah. interaction between the television and the stereo yep. system. And they, because they were in different rooms, oh, he, no. he's like, that's why the hi-fi buyers didn't go for it. And you wouldn't think about that, making it just like, nope. oh, it's for TV. And like, nope. oh, yeah, you plug it into your stereo. Oh, man. Yep. But this one's mine. You cannot have it. <laughs> Damn it. <Yep. laughs> so, but it is gorgeous. The active on the on the board for oh, it. I have, I, it has no. a different because that was their tagline back then, oh. as far as for, so active leisure. Active is leisure, the brand so it's, on it. it's etched on, on, on the board. Oh, okay. I have to open it up. <laughs> Check it out, yeah. Well, that's a really amazing piece of historical yeah, hardware, history. And, and now it's been signed yep. and it looks gorgeous. Bidding starts tomorrow. No, it's not for sale. No. <laughs> One dollar. <laughs> I think I'll lose out. Well, that's awesome. Thanks for showing us yeah, that. Of yeah, of course. Yeah, we got Oh, uh, we do have one person from Mattress Monkeys. Uh, is his partner here? Um, Why don't I look at Mattress Monkeys? Do you want to see if they want to come over? Well, that's Zach Attack over there. Yeah. Um, I don't know where 8 uh, Bit Poet is, but let's go over okay. to Zach. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Zachary. Hey, how's it going? Where's your partner? Is he around here? He's not going to be able to make it today. Oh, no. Okay. Would you like to talk about uh, Mattress Monkeys for a little bit? I'll do the best I can. Okay, let's go over to your game and uh, find out some of the uh, amazing technology. First of its kind from Tari. I think. And you can verify it, yeah. Oh, there's some advertising going on all of a sudden. <laughs> right there. So, this is Mattress Monkeys, and it's not only available for the 2600, which we saw on my stream, but it is available both in one cartridge for the 2600 and 7800. Can you talk a little bit about how you achieved that? Yeah, I mean, do we want to start with just showing it in action? Yeah, let's uh, jump into it and show the 7800 because uh, we haven't played the 7800 version on the stream yet. That's right. It's so new. <laughs> grab a joystick and uh, talk us through a little bit how to play Mattress Monkeys okay. and what it's about and how you came up with a crazy idea of monkeys jumping on mattresses. Okay, so this is a group effort. Um, a bit poet who's not here today he wasn't able to make it, but yeah. he's he's the mastermind behind the graphics, behind the game design, everything on the creator process. Right. I basically just coded it up, had a few ideas here and there on how we can tweak some things, but you know, 
he took care of most of the, the gameplay and the stuff like that. The and the story behind it, yeah. Um, it did take a lot of tuning to, to get the physics, though. Oh, I bet. Because so. I, I don't think I've ever seen such an active play field on the 2600 with it moving around so much. Yeah, because you got the mattress, right? And yeah. We're like trying to figure out, okay, the, the monkey's going to land on it. The, it's got to end it when the monkey lands. Yes. And then how does that launch the other one? And wh <laughs> wh how is that supposed to work, right? There's no book that says this is the physics for this kind of game, right? Yeah. So that was you just completely... You had to come up with that all yourself. And, and so we got it to the point, you'll, you'll see what happens is it depends on where one monkey is. Yeah. When you land, how far away you are will change well, like what angle you get launched up and how okay. high. Okay. So it's not just a basic up and down. Right. There, there's some momentum from the, I'm guessing, waterbed, right? Exactly. Because not many mattresses move like that. So it's irappropriate 70s, 80s waterbeds because you don't see that too often anymore. <laughs> that's <laughs> so that's true. awesome. Yeah, so we got we got a couple of modes where you can just let it play itself. You put in zero player. Demo mode. You want to just do your own game. You got that. And then two player, which is my favorite. You get two people playing this game. It's so much fun. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And the worst part is, is like, if you're playing with somebody that's not good at it and they get themselves killed, it's game over for you, too. <laughs> that's true. So it's kind of co-op, kind yeah. of uh, it's like co -op. competitive. <laughs> yeah. So, you so you're trying to, like, that. please stay alive. I want to get more score. Right. And so, I mean, the base, it's a very simple game, right? You don't even use the button besides starting the game. And the button does does do something. It pauses the game, right? So, so a little the bonus. Will, you can pause any time, yep. um, which is actually really great for developing because I can pause it on a specific frame and figure out, oh, oh. this thing's a little pixel off here. And yep. I can, I'd be sitting there, like, measuring stuff, counting pixels on the screen. So, and very sure couch right. compliant as well. Yes. So you can quit right out of the game at any time. Any time you want to rage quit. Right back to the title screen. That's awesome. So, um, and so you can see if if you distance yourself just right from the other monkey, that's going to control where you go. Oh, I see. And what what angle of the uh, incline of the wave? Let's say. Yeah. So you're basically, like half a wave away is, is going to get you the most height. Oh, okay. Now yep. you can hold up, and it'll give you an extra height. And yep. you can hold down. So if you think you're about to hit the fan, you can hold down to try to. Lower yourself in mid -air. down a little bit mid -air? in midair. Yeah, all the controls work in midair. So you're trying to catch flies, but you're also trying to avoid this spinning fan at the above the bed. Yeah. So it's a kind of a, a sweet spot right there that you're trying to get. Exactly. And I'm, I'm gonna let this play itself because it does better than me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the technology. This, like, right here we see um, a 2600 and a 7800, right. and those aren't two different cartridges. Those are like you could swap them. Let's, and let's do let's, that. let's actually swap them. Let's take the 7800 out and actually put it in the 2600. Watch carefully, there is no trickery. There's no sleight of hand. There is no magic behind this. There's no CG. It is completely swapped. The 2600 one in the 7800 and the 7800 in the 2600. And it doesn't, like people, what people would expect is that the 7800 would boot into the 2600 version of the game. Right, exactly. So how does it detect what system it's in? Besides so, magic. <laughs> magic is the answer. Yeah. It's just magic. There, there is an arm chip in the, the cartridge. It's actually a very weak arm chip. Oh. It's, it's, it's only a Cortex-M0 with like running 64 megahertz. I, I think it's like one of the weakest ones in all the arm oh. enhanced cartridges. Oh. Makes it cheaper, maybe. Yeah. It, it, it helps. <laughs> yeah. But so it, it watches what the Atari is doing. Okay. And, and the way the 7800 boots up is different than the way the 2600 boots up. Okay. So it, it detects that, and it has to detect that really quickly because when the 7800 boots up, it does a, a crypto check on the cartridge, right? Okay, yeah. Because these are signed cartridges. Yeah. So, and it's a little difficult because there's some pins missing, right? It's got the connector for the 2600. It's missing eight pins on the cartridge. Right, okay. So there's a little bit of guessing <laughs> going on there. And you said that that disables the ability to put a pokey chip in, in the cartridge. Correct, because yeah. the, where the pokey chip would hook up physically, it's just not there. Yeah. It's completely, because then it wouldn't fit in the 2600. That's right. That's a, the that's a way you can make it compatible. But 
You can get some pretty good sounds out of a TIA on a 7800. You have a lot more time and abilities. You can, you yeah. can. And then especially with the, the arm chip, I'm sure future games will take more advantage of that. And yeah. You know, you can do sampled audio and so voices we, and stuff. So we first showed off this early technology on Octopusher a long time ago, the 7800, 2600 on the show. And I thought that was, that was amazing. But now it's actually available in a cartridge form on Mattress Monkeys. Right, yeah, Octopusher is still a work in progress. Um, in fact, we have that scheduled for next year. Um, and yep. it's, it's one of the previews we're about to get here. <laughs> and you've also up, upgraded the previews as well on the 7800. Yeah, you can see since we started right at the same oh, time. Oh, wow, they're, yeah. <laughs> they're in sync. Show the, show the advertisements and the differences between them. You can see that th these are both in sync. Well, somewhat pretty, pretty in sync. Close. Wow, that's way, <laughs> way more graphics on Bigfoot's blast yeah. coming so, 2025. So this is another one we got scheduled for next year. We're yeah. pretty far along with this, in fact. I think you'll be able to play this soon. Oh, great. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, that, this one will also be dual system. It's going to have the enhanced graphics. So is this, is this your thing going forward, a dual system? That, gives you, that makes you do, do a lot of work. Uh, or, or how much work actually is it? Because I guess you have the basic idea, the, the basic code, or the pseudocode at least. So that all the game logic is shared. Okay, really? I, yeah, I don't have to redo any of the game logic. Oh, it's, that's it's identical great. between the games. And then, so we have to make the graphics engine specific for each console. And then Matthew, he gets to do the graphics twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so all the work's offloaded onto him. So, so I think he's the one that actually gets the more work from this. Um, Vitoko asks, so the 7800 lines of the connector are not used at all? They're physically missing. <laughs> They're physically missing. It can't use them if, and the 7800 doesn't complain about that, it doesn't expect them, it just reads garbage or zeros, or we how have does that to, work? So I have to be very careful, like I couldn't take a traditional 7800 game and put it on this cartridge and expect it to work, because mm. it wouldn't. It, it's going to access stuff that I won't be able to tell the difference between the cartridge and the system. Okay. So I, I have to be really careful about where everything's at in the memory address ranges okay. in, in order for it to be working. And then if, if this crashes, like if I get out of sync, it's, it's done. There's no recovering from it. Okay. <laughs> so very tight timing, very, you have to do it very, very carefully, so. but you've made it work. And Once it's stable, it's super stable. <laughs> But during development, I get these crashes, and there's no emulator for this yet, so right. I'm just oh, left in the dark. Yes. It might be this change I made. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, so that would be uh, very challenging. So once, I think, what, what we were talking last night about, somebody asked a question to you last night when, while we were out at the arcade about switching back and forth between the 2600 mode and 7800 mode and I found that very interesting. I, I really wanted to do that. I want to be able to toggle like the black and white switch and you, you just go from high res to low res. Yes. Uh, but as far as I know we're just not going to be able to do that. Okay. Because of the way the hardware works in the 7800. Right. It kind of locks in in one. Yeah. So you, you can have one cartridge do both. Like I can tell this cartridge to boot into 2600 mode on the 7800. Yeah. We could get the 2600. But once we've done that, you're going to have to power cycle the switch back. Okay, and you can't like force it to do a power down somehow and come back manually. I don't know. Like glitch it <laughs> out without and frying reset. the system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not do that then. Yeah, let's, let's, let's not that. fry people's uh, <laughs> systems. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for talking about your brand new game, Mattress Monkeys. Uh, it's, like I said, <clears throat> it's the first of its kind. Two games on one for two different systems for an Atari. I think somebody brought up that Odyssey did it a long time ago, but this is a first for the Atari as far as I know. Yeah, because the thing is, is like I feel bad for people that have the 7800 because, yeah, oh. they can play the 2600 games. That's right. But you're stuck with the 20, you don't get to take advantage of the system, right? Is there any way to force it into 2600 mode? Uh, were you thinking about that? It's like, oh, 7800 people have to play the 7800 version and 2600, well, 2600, they have no option, but right. somehow to like hold down the pause button and boot it into 2600 mode? That may be something we, we think about in the future releases. Yeah. Um, I, we'll see if anybody asks for that. Because then the 7800 people will truly have two different versions. Because yeah. that'd be kind of cool. And right now it's it's an NTSC release only. 
Oh, okay. Um, and simply because I just don't have a PAL system to test with. Yeah, especially um, a 7800 PAL. And, and trying to figure out how to get that <laughs> here, here in the U.S., I just... Yeah, you have to talk to some uh, European uh, people in the forums. So if we could, if we could figure that out, or, or maybe this cartridge ends up in one of their hands and, and they let yes. me know if it works or not. Oh, that too, yeah. Because <laughs> so, I have no idea. <laughs> well, we'll see. Well, thank but, you so much for talking with us, Thanks, and uh, we'll see you online. Appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. Bye-bye. We'll see if Daryl Genther has anything to say. Yeah. I know he doesn't have a new release right now, but we'll attack him anyway. We'll say hi to him. Hello, Daryl. Hey. Actually, you do have something to talk about. Let's talk about Mousetrap. Yeah. Are, are you, you want to talk on uh, on stream? Sure. Okay. Let's, uh, yeah, let's talk about Mouse this. Line over there in Mouse oh, yeah, Line. Mouse Line as well. So uh, we've got Daryl Genther here, and we've got Mousetrap here. How are you doing today? I'm well, how are you? Oh, doing really well. Talking yeah. to developers, walking around, doing some streaming. Just winding down. <laughs> yeah, we're all kind of done. Yep. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's been a long weekend, a lot of standing, a lot of walking. Uh, I think we showed off your uh, controller yesterday as oh, we're walking yeah. around. Yeah. Uh, that's really awesome. Yeah, so where Brian, did you get that from? Brian at BD Retromod. Uh, yeah. I met him at a Cleveland game show. We're both in Ohio. And uh, he, I told him, I said, it'd be really great to have a, a mousetrap layout like the arcade. Yeah. And he said, I, I think I could do that for you. Oh, and that's awesome. We kind of fit it into a, we have one finger red, yellow, blue for the different colored doors and just kind of palm mute the button. Yeah, very ergonomic. Yeah, and then you got your stick here. It's a four directional stick, works great with the game. Yeah. And the nice thing about it too is, you know, he said there's concern about 2600 plus, 7800 plus compatibility. Yeah. With Right now I'm using the SNES to Atari. Yeah. You could also use the Mega 78. Right, and so it's got lots of different options for controllers. Right, so you got the red, yellow, blue doors. Same layout, yeah. But you can't use that in a 7800 Plus because okay. of the adapter. Oh, so okay. with this, it plugs into both joystick ports. So this will work on the 7800 that Plus. That will. Nice. That, yeah. So does you have any plans of actually putting that into production for this and maybe other games? Well, right now it's a, it's a proof of concept, yeah. but I'm sure he'd be open to that. Yeah. Um, as a possibility, and then you know this is always good for a, yeah for a standby. as a backup. Yeah, it's got the pause right here. I don't want to reset my game because I've got a high score. <laughs> oh, we interrupted but you. If Sorry. I hit both of these, yep. you get the reset, and you have your unpause here. That's awesome. I, I love this adapter. It opens up the 7800 to a, a world of new games, especially more complex games as yeah. well that might have uh, a bunch of different actions you want to do, like say in an RPG or something. Right. Yeah. So. Your game went from mousetrap to rat trap to mousetrap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting evolution there. Yeah. So I guess I could sacrifice the game. Oh, but let's not. No, let's no, not. no. We don't have to do it. We've shown it lots on the show. That's so true. That's we don't true. have to. So I, I started off plotting the high resolution 320 mouse. Yeah. I wanted to try to get, you know, the arcade look and feel where it was the high res single color sprites. Yes. And, and then I felt that the 7800 version was just cuter with the the different colored the multicolored sprites. Oh yeah. And it really brings it really out really pops out pops with the colors. And it's gorgeous. So I went that route. So this instead. is 160. That's 160? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I went that route and then I thought, well, can I make the maze? Can I, you know, it all comes from a technical, can I do this? Yeah. And then the game was complete, and we thought, well, we could release it as Rat Trap, and then obviously that was not a go. Yeah. But recently we got permission to release it as Mouse Trap. That's awesome. So, That's really great. Yeah, so and, I'm excited. And is this going to be released in the next cycle uh, in Atari Age, or what's the... Uh, is there a timeline, or you don't know at this point? I don't know. Okay. I, I, right now, uh, I don't think there's a manual or a box. So that, you know, you have all the background work, things like that. Oh I'm, yeah, I'm sure Al of... has other. Yeah, he's got his plate full always. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so you have to just stand in line, I guess, and and wait for your turn. Yeah. Yeah. So. And uh, you also have another game as well. Do you want to yeah. go over there and, and sure. show it off? Yeah, oh yeah, we don't want to abandon uh, this, right? It's I, I get this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay, it's not a not a personal best, but just a good high score. 
So in the in the mad rush of uh, pack lines, yeah. this this past year on every single system in existence, yeah. uh, you did you made a, an interesting twist and yeah. made mouse line, and I and I really like that because it strayed from the usual get the power up, right. and now you're actively chasing the enemy. Right. This is along the lines of your other game. You can store the power up. Right. Yeah. So mouse trap, you get up to. The six bones that you can hold at one time. With this, there's three, because yeah. I figured I need to, you know, make it a little simpler. But, and I added a little bit of <gasps> chewing. Oh. oh, I've never seen that. Yeah, yeah so, so that is new. That is awesome. Yeah, it's got full high score support. Yeah. It still has crazy cat mode, yeah. as seen on ZPH. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, Excellent. So, yeah. And, and is this one game. that might get a cartridge release, possibly? Yeah. You yeah. Think? It's fully featured enough that, yeah. Yeah, I, I questioned it at first, and then I've had some, some people tell me, no, if that was on cartridge, I would get it because it's a oh, little good. different. Yes. And, and Al it said, stands no, out. I could make a you know a less expensive, it's only 48K, so I can make a, a, a cheaper cart. Maybe you can uh, do a dual pack with yeah. the other one, yeah. two for one. Or yeah. the big mega pack with the mouse trap and mouse That's line. That's right. Get an EXO style box. Yeah. <laughs> with the big, uh, big booklet right. that comes with right. it. Right. The right. With some cheese and a rat trap. Oh yeah, big plastic piece trap. of cheese. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I've been up to. Oh, excellent. Well, that's some of what I've been up some. to. Some. Right. There's some secret stuff. Yeah. Uh, you're always you're always working on new stuff, exciting stuff. Uh, nothing you can probably talk about right now. No. 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 Under lock and key. Yeah. But you know it's going to be good. It's coming from Daryl Ganther. Well, thank you. I yes. appreciate that. Well, it's great talking great with you, you, as well, always. Yeah. And, uh, you're usually here. Where do you come from? I come from Canton, Ohio. Ohio. Yeah. yeah. So you're gonna make it next year as well? I hope. Yeah. I hope. It's a fun time. It is. And it's always fun to watch people play your games as well. Yeah. Okay. It is. Well, we'll see you around. All right. Take care. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Now I think we've possibly exhausted everyone here for now. I think we should wander over to the other booth. Yeah. And so. We can always see here when we get back. Or yeah. Gone. So should we take a shortcut or should we take the more scenic route? I think shortcut. Okay, so let's go. Unless he. Well, I don't want to buy something on camera. That's a bit tedious. Uh, we'll do that after. Unless we see somebody from Atari that we might want to talk to. Um, I don't see Ben from Play on here. No, they're out right now. So we'll come back. So we'll, we'll wander back there and see if there's any Atari people that we can talk to about some of the upcoming uh, homebrews being released from Atari, um, Bob Decker's Enzo's games. Oh, hey, Ask Ramirez. I'm trying to check the chat every once in a while, but uh, especially when I'm talking and trying to think of questions and stuff. So hopefully the... Uh, the audio sounds good. Um, yeah, we'll keep going through. So the floor is still pretty active. A lot of people still here. Not quite at the height of Saturday, but it's still quite steady. So it's 3.14, so we might head over to Audacity first and see if they are available, because I know they're expecting us. Because I told Dan that we'd be here around 3 o'clock to 3.30. Oh, it looks like they're kind of available, so that's good. Daniel. Hey, hey Dan, how's it going? <laughs> hey Gary. Hey, how are you? Hey. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. How's how's the uh, event going for you guys? Going well. Excellent. Great. Right, right. So, actually, you can hold it. Thank there you. There you go. <laughs> That's great. How are you? Very good. We're having a great time here. Yeah. Oh, it's fun. It's huge. It's huge. huge this year, Gary. Yes. We're doing well. We're doing good. 
Excellent. Doing good. Yeah, it's great to see you have a booth us. here. Yes, Showing off your here. games and future Big games. Booth. We have Circus Convoy, oh, yeah. Alien Abduction, yeah. and previewing Casey's Gold. That'll be out later this year. And Casey's Gold will be out before the end of the year. Oh, that's excellent. So people have been stopping by, they checking out Casey's Gold. A lot of interest in Casey's, Casey's Gold. So, that's excellent. So what have been? what's the reaction been? i got to tell you, it's very positive. I'm very happy they all like it. They yeah. say it's addictive. Fun Good. to play, Good. Uh, and they all like the little hidden things that are inside of it. And it's a kind of a pick up and play type of game that you can just get into immediately. No, that's oh, what yeah. I wanted to do. I wanted to have something where I just pick it up and jump right in, get the first level done in a minute, yeah. and keep going and building up. And there's a big history to this. There we is. We talked about it before, but maybe you can just well, talk a little bit about it. Well, it's the spiritual successor to Gary's classic Keystone Capers. Yeah. Some people have remarked it reminds them of that. I have Not some of the thing. some of the objects from Keystone Capers that yep. appear some in there. Homages. Yes. Let's homages. Say, you, <laughs> homages. <laughs> you may even find some of the characters from some of our other games Very hidden nice. on the trains if you can find them. Yeah. Uh, and some Easter eggs that are in there as well. Very nice. And and this is like uh, a continuation of a game that you had. Uh, started uh, earlier A concept as well. I had at concept, Activision, yeah. but honestly I've rewritten it completely from scratch and yes. it has built up on a much bigger design than I had ever hoped to do. Oh yeah, way past what that you was. You had seen the game uh, about a year or so ago. And yes. Now I have five western ghost towns and five underground mine car levels where you ride mine cars oh, wow. like Indiana Jones. Oh, that's you can, much bigger than what You can I move saw. TNT around and blow up yeah, walls wow. and unlock and find keys and uh, kind of shake the mine and then gold nuggets appear and you've got to collect them all. And I put in some time elements. You've got to find gold pocket watches oh. to get more time for some of the levels. Yeah. And we have a beautiful gold pocket watch as part of the VIP package. Oh, well, there you go. Which is the chain kind that the conductor had. Yeah. So you've been continuing continuation of these deluxe boxes that you've been yes. putting out. Yes. They sell out so quickly. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And it's a great perk for people who want more. Yes. Right. Want more than the game to, to live inside the game. You've got patches for people who get high scores as well. We do. Yeah, which is a continuation of, of what people loved back in the day. Right. It, it is. Exactly. And, and with our QR code technology that Dave and Gary put together, it's yeah. easy to get a patch. That's Just good. <laughs> finish the game session, yep. grab a picture of the screen, it'll send the code, it'll send the score to our high score screen and you'll be alerted if you got a patch for the for We're the club in the future. Plateau. I know right <laughs> Dave said no today more, in a, no more uh, photos no more of the photo CRT. No. Dave said today he's brought the 2600 to the 21st century. Oh, that's by doing a great that. slogan. Yes. Oh, you got to coin that. Put yep. a trademark on that. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yep. we have, uh, this will be the next effort for the next month or so, and then yep. we're excited to say we have other games in development that will come be coming next year. I've heard that. And they yes. are amazing. And you've also got John Van Ryzen. John Van Ryzen. The team's getting back together. You know, the, yeah, we're getting the band back together. <laughs> That's right. You know, I, I play, still play Hero to this day. Oh, it's, and I it's a classic. I contacted John and said, we love Hero, can you please do another one? Yes. And he, he acclimated and said, yeah, I'll, I'll, he acquiesced and said, yes, I'll do it. Yeah. And wonderfully, he created Alien Abduction, which yeah. we're fortunate enough to have the, the cartridge uh, yes. uh, copy of. And anybody who's played Hero, they can just sit down and play Alien Abduction, and it's a, it's like a continuation along. Yep. If, if, if yep. they like Hero, they will actually love yes, Alien Abduction. That's right. There's some new skills, and it's not exactly the same game. No. But it is, it's very much enough of a familiarity to and Hero fan. And I find it even slicker than Hero. Yes. Right. So, you can really move that character anywhere yep. you want really quick. Yep. And it doesn't have that little pause that Hero has. That's so right, when you push out. up on the on the on the helicopter pack. Yeah. yeah. That's now great. I think we still have VIPs available for that on Just our a website. Few. We've sold a couple here. There are Just a few, a few of the VIPs are available and they come yep. with a little alien figure yep. and some very cool swag. So these aren't just a one-off. You guys are continuing to make we more and more games. We are going to be going you've, forward. You've got a timeline of other games you've already started. We do. Gary yeah. and Dave. Yeah, there'll both probably have. be two games at least next year. Oh, yep. really? Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm hoping up. to make sure I never do one that's six years in development. <laughs> so I'm going to go no. right to the gusto and, and get you one. You didn't like six years? <laughs> nah, I didn't like it. <laughs> and my long. fans didn't like six years. So I'm going right to the gusto and going to be working 
metal to the pedal to the metal to get the next one done. Oh, that's excellent. Well, we love doing it. Yeah. And well, thank you for all the publicity you give to the system. Oh, of course. And all the followers you have. I if, mean, you have helped bring the 2600 back. Well, I wanted to keep the spirit alive. I wanted to promote all the amazing games that are on our favorite consoles. Right. And it was such a joy to talk to you guys about Circus Convoy and John Van Ryzen. I couldn't believe when he told me he'd never really done publicity before. He never did, for, right. And I was like the first person he's ever done a video interview for. That's wonderful that he did and that. And I'm like, why wouldn't people he's want very, to talk to he's him? Very low key. <laughs> yeah, he's very low-key. He was very surprised. A, he's we a went, great guy. We took him to the uh, he's court a show in Ohio. Yeah. And he was like, Dan, I can't believe people care about a game I did 40 years ago. <laughs> we said, John, it was one of the best games ever. It's celebrated. It's celebrated. As a classic game. Hero's amazing. So yep. yes. I'm, I'm so happy that he's back in the spotlight. We're hoping he'll do another one next year. Oh. I hear rumors I, that he's playing with something. So. Oh, I hope so. Yes. <laughs> so looking forward to playing more of your games on Zero Page Homebrew Thank in you. the future. And, of course, your new game, Casey's Gold, as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, can't wait. Great seeing you guys again. Yeah, great seeing you as well. Thanks for Thanks. coming out. Thanks, James. Great, Gary. Hey, David. Great seeing you again. Thanks for visiting us. Thank yeah, you. you're best. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Watch Bye. Zero Page Homebrew. That's right. <laughs> so let's head over to Champ Games. Hi there. Hey, Talk to John. Hello, hello. No, you don't want any publicity? <laughs> That's enough for me. Here you go. go, you can hold it. Hey, John. Hello, James, how are you? <laughs> so we're here at Champ Games booth. I, I, I mean, I camera. <laughs> camera one. Mysterious person behind exactly. the camera. I don't know. Yeah. So you've set up an amazing looking booth once again. Oh, thanks, yeah. At PRGE, bigger and better. Nice yeah. banner. Yeah, and, uh, Nathan designed the uh, CR banners right there. Old and, banner, so. Oh, it looks great. Yeah. You and you've job, added so. some new games to your roster. Yes, uh, you've, more. You brought back some uh, classic uh, homebrew games. Yes, yes, we've uh, worked with the developers and we had them reprinted. Um, with the permission of the artist, of course. And, uh, Juno first, Ruby Q, The End, Stradivox, Star Castle. Yeah, so all been uh, um, republished with Champ Games, as you can see. Yeah. So that's part of our Champ Games Presents line. Those all CGP. Ah, that's what right it was there. called. Somebody was trying to remember what the what the tagline Champ yes. Games Presents. Nathan came up with that. Yeah. Because thanks, <laughs> thanks, Nathan. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. He, is, he, he is might actually, be. Let's see. He actually is watching. No, so. he's not on today. He was there really? yesterday. So. He actually just texted me saying, "When are you guys?" Oh, are? Nathan. Maybe he's being quiet. Oh, maybe he's quiet. Said, self. Uh, EST. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> but yeah. So we're that, and of course we have two and com. Yeah, we got to show this off. So this is the new. That's your copy. So don't get it all grubby. <laughs> yeah. That's the last one. Wait, I had to. I had to keep turn it aside. Three people away. For that. Yeah, push them. Push them exactly, away. Exactly. So. Yeah. So this is the new game just released. Tutankhamen Arcade. There we go. Somebody was complaining yesterday. I didn't show the back, back of the box. So there we go. There's the back of the box. Because I knew we were coming today okay, to talk yeah. to you more extensively. Wonderful. So what's been the reaction to Tutankhamen Arcade? Oh, it's been great. Yeah, everyone, everyone loves playing it for one thing. So that's great. And yeah. Like I said, it's, uh, we sold out. I think brought like 60 copies, and they all went. So except oh, for this wow. one. So this is the one I hid for you. So excellent. Yeah. yeah. You got the display in sight. Exactly. So yeah. So <laughs> typically, we, yeah. So it's it was fairly popular. So. And you brought back. You brought also your full uh, library of Champ games as well. Yes. Yeah. Because we had a new print. We almost ran out of the print that we did last year. So okay. we had a few games out of the store for a little bit, um, but we did a reprint when we did this, so we added them all back, so. That's um, great, so everybody coming to the show was able to get any of these games. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And oh my God, that, that has dwindled since last time, the, yeah. the, the yes. amount. I think he'll sell out by the end of the show, it yeah. looks like. Possibly, hopefully we have some stragglers that few extra You'll dollars go home by, so. empty-handed. That'd be nice. Pockets so. full of yeah, cash. I, yeah, you see these big, uh, <laughs> Um, suitcase. suitcase we brought. We had two of them full of cartridges and all the printing oh, wow. materials. So it was, uh, oh, and then Nathan actually, he was really helpful uh, 
Um, he's organized all the printing here and since uh, he's driving distance, even though he didn't come, um, Rick White's the guy who runs the show. Oh, yeah. He lives next to Nathan. He filled up his car and brought all this stuff here. Oh, that's very so, nice. So, yeah, so all the systems were modded by Nathan and, uh, of course, yep. he did all the printing and stuff like that. So. Excellent. And you've got uh, six systems going here? Yep, yep. Next year we're actually planning, we were planning on this year to have a double booth. But when Nathan couldn't oh, come, wow. I said, well, let's just keep it from one this year, and the next year we'll have, hopefully we'll be able to put a few more uh, systems You're going to get too. some more monitors? So yes. you have all your games playing? Yeah, well, actually, Nathan, I mean, um, Al and Fred were very generous, and they gave us uh, two of these monitors are Nathan's, or champion, but yeah. say four. I had to bring two of my own monitors down from Vancouver, so that's probably why, because you're borrowing some of his. Yes, exactly. So, <laughs> no, there's actually, it's like, 15 underneath these tables that they wanted us to store for them. So, um, <laughs> so there's plenty in here. Oh, so, good. We've been swapping them in and out. They're all of average, you know, varying degrees, degrees of quality. Varying degrees of goodness. So, yeah. So, yeah, we're also, um, yeah, so we were selling quad tarries this year. I don't know if uh, people oh, know that. Man, that's in the store finally. But, uh, oh, they may not know that, actually. Yeah. Because a lot I, of your games support the quad tarry. Yeah, almost all of them now. So For but, either the dual joysticks or two players plus voice or two players plus yeah, but also two high score is, saving. Yeah, yeah, two and count dual joystick game as well. So, um, yep. Yeah, so we uh, bought like 30 of them off uh, Nathan Tolbert. Yeah. And so we're adding those to the store. Um, and of course, we have a couple uh, demos here for games we're releasing next year. Yes, let's talk. Of, let's talk about yeah, Spiders Arcade. And, and we also bit. have T-shirts. Yes, blue and black. Yeah, so which if you, you want guys, to make Tushin sure you guys Arcade, grab one as well. So we uh, will. We'll come back. Yeah, so I like don't the blue. That's what I have. I love blue. So I think it, it works well with the blue in I've the. I've been uh, working out, so but you guys can enhance that, right? Like, uh, <laughs> oh, it's automatically enhanced. It oh, says, really? okay. "Oh, it knows it's John on the screen." <laughs> 10%, 20% bigger. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think the blue does work well with the blue in the title. Yes, exactly. Really nicely. It. So, yeah, so I'll probably so get a blue one. Wonderful. Okay. So So you've got Spiders Arcade here, a brand new game. Yes, revealed here first, right? Yep, at exactly, the PRGE. Yep. Yeah, the first. I was the only one who played it, not even Nathan. Anyway, I've just been developing it myself the last <laughs> few months on and off. And then I yeah. finished it on the plane. Then my son Joey was here. He's the one playing. He's oh. trying to beat Scramble. He's been trying it all weekend. <laughs> he can do it. Yeah, Make exactly. it to the end. He was the second one to play it. And then uh, we... we oh, yeah. This been... is in Spider's Arcade. We're... It's oh. not even playing. Well, it's oh, right no. here. A... Let's pop it in. Yeah. Get oh. rid of this silly robot war. We still have robot wars for sale. There we go. <laughs> if you want to make it down quick, it's the end of the day. Yes, exactly. So who knows how to play this thing, so... But... You can at least we'll see get the, the uh, camera going here. Yeah. There we go. So look at that amazing zoom in. Oh, of the, the big, big spider. spider. Yeah, that's that, that was in the arcade, so I was always intrigued by that. Always uh, caught my eye when I went there. So and beautiful to everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> Shoot it all. And I'm playing. I'm used to force. I'm used to move it up. Oh yeah. Yeah. Are we? Are we? Okay, I think we're back. Hopefully. It'll take a second for people to join. Yeah, so we'll give a second before we uh, start up again. Yeah, we'll blame the cats, even though they're exactly. hundreds of miles away. Oh, yeah. Oh, I always blame the cats. I'm still blaming the cats. Oh, for My sure. My cats are 3,000. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're back. Excellent. Yes, refresh, RC70. So, you're telling me uh, Spider's Arcade. Richard. Not this one. No, maybe it turned out the volume. Yeah. There we go. Now it's Spider's. Now it's Spiders Arcade officially. Okay. Now, now you're telling me a little bit yesterday, so we'll rehash that a bit. Yeah. About, so uh, yeah, as I was mentioning, before the internet, um, boys <laughs> oh, and girls. When was that? Are um, we old? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. When you play the video game in your hometown, you just assume <laughs> everyone else is playing it. But yes. so Spiders just happened to be in a, a little arcade that I had in my hometown. I stopped by on the way home. I always loved it. But then I noticed after years went by, I never saw it again. So that's when I figured out it was an obscure game. But yeah. since I've always liked it, um, I figured it'd be a great um, addition to the 2600 as a shooter, especially with the um, the prototype that was discovered a few months ago, the UA oh, prototype yeah, yeah. of Spiders, which is... <laughs> anyway. like, eh, I could do better. Right? Exactly. But you, had, you said you'd already started it before yes, the prototype exactly. came so out. Yes, exactly. So what did happen? So we originally were just going to call it Spiders. Yeah. And I think we changed like the I to a Y, you know. <laughs> spiders. Yeah, spiders, you know, Nathan and I have been having fun with it. But then when we 
figured out there was um, the prototype we renamed the Spider's Arcade. To, Which you've done before with Gorf and yes, other ones exactly. because so to differentiate it. So yes. when people type up spiders, it doesn't come up with the prototype, etc. Yeah. Exactly. So that's where the where the name comes from. So that's what we're inspired by. So. Um, so, yeah, so, because most people aren't going to be familiar with spiders. Yeah, so we're hoping that something maybe, like this will at least get people to take a leap. Uh, maybe you can tell, tell a little bit about what goes on in the game. Oh, sure, yeah. So it's basically it's a straight-up shooter. Yeah. So, um, and you're basically being attacked by killer spiders that are ruled by the There's spider... The wink, the wink. There. Ruled by the spider queen. There's the spider queen right now. Exactly. So, All made it. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's for millions of years. I exactly. Mean, decades, decades. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he remembered it too. We went. Yeah. Remember that game I, with this girl with wing nuts? Yeah, went. What are you talking? About? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh yeah, yeah Spider's game. So how long has it been since you thought about it or played it or have you played it in emulation? I played on Mame. Yeah, because I always oh. liked it in Mame too. So yeah, that's all. So it had been like 30 years. Then I played on Mame. I went. This is cool. Oh, yeah. and I think it'll be a pretty good 2600 game. So I've been thinking about it, but probably. 15, 20 years of making it the 2600, and then finally yeah. I just decided that. And you did a great job of representing the webs with the play field. Was yes. that something that you're humming and hawing about, or did you know that it would look pretty I knew, decent? I knew it would have to be with the play field, so. Um, yeah. It turned to with all, there's so many sprites on, this, on the screen, as you can see, there's cocoons can become yeah. fun of them. There's it's a, a full a, screen of action. Yes, exactly. So I think it works pretty well with, this, with the web and some of that. The logic of the, how the web expands and some of that. That was probably the most difficult part that I had to do was uh, figuring out how to get the web to, to grow and not cross itself. And, you know, right. So it's that's that's what I worked on on the plane. So that wasn't working before that. Yeah. The wink. The wink again. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, and I played it briefly, and it is just a it's a great shooter. Yes. Like straight up I think great so shooter. Too. So so we um, do. So plan. if you like space shooters, yeah, you'll love shooting spiders. I guess yes. right at the same time. Exactly. So we do plan on one of the. Um, drawbacks of the original that Nathan is pointing out, because he's not a big fan, <laughs> um, is that, you know, he it, begrudgingly is, it, is, made it. Yeah, it is yeah. a little limiting. Like, once you get through it once, you know, it's kind of the same thing. And the only draw is, what is the girl going to do next? Because every level she does something different. Oh, okay. So, um, that was kind of the draw in the arcade. But, uh, obviously, we plan on adding things to it like we always do. So, it's going to be a challenge mode, yeah. um, uh, boss, uh, like a final boss kind of thing where you're actually fighting the spider queen and stuff like that. Ooh, Maybe wow. like a egg wave where the eggs just appear and the spider's attacking because you're trying to stop the spiders from crossing the bottoms. Yeah. So it's two things. So it's not just shooting. You also can't let too many pass you. So, so how big is the game going to be? 32 32? Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow, even with the big graphics? Yeah, and let's, I'm almost out of RAM already, so I'm wrong, <laughs> because, just because of all the graphics in the game. Yeah, full um, screen graphics, yeah, really. Yeah, especially the Space Mo Mona Lisa, that's what the, she's called, actually. So, <laughs> space Mona uh, that Lisa. That takes a lot of space, too. So Yeah, but, excellent. Yeah, so, um, and we are planning a co-op mode as well, which I think it's going to work pretty well with this kind of game, because you have a lot of spiders, you're both going to be Yeah, stuff. it'll help you out having two players. There. Yes, there's a exactly. lot going on on the screen. Yeah. It looks, yeah, once you get to level four or five, it's complete madness. So, but we'll, and we'll since it's a fixed shooter along the bottom, yeah. two players would be relatively simple rather than if two players are going all over yes, the screen. Exactly. So I think it's going to work pretty well. So. so, this is the game that you're going to be working on in 2025 for a 2025 release? Yes, I'm absolutely. Guessing. It was probably the first half, and then of course we uh, made the announcement about the Xevious. Oh, segment, yes. Uh, which is set up here, by the way. So, yeah, let's talk a little bit about the Champ Games Presents event. Sure. And so you've you've already added five games to the roster. Yes. So, and yeah. you've got Xevious coming yeah. up. So when is that scheduled for? Um, well, actually, Chris Walton was here. I'm sure. Did you see Chris? Yeah, I have. I, I really want to catch him and talk to him about Xevious. Yeah, exactly. I mean, well, I'll have him on the show for an extensive interview about right. Xevious exactly. before the release. Yep. So, yeah, so we worked out a deal where we are republishing Juno first as part of Champ Game Presents. Brilliant game. Yeah. If you like space oh, shooters, yes, oh my god, Juno yeah. first. We are very pleased. And of course, we also worked with him and Tom on, um, on Star Castle Arcade, getting that republished as well. Yeah. And then with uh, Silvio Magno for um, Ruby Q, which has been very popular. We sold a yeah. ton of those today. Great Qbert yep. type game. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. And then we work with Carlos Santana, which is Rayman. Um, yep. On uh, 
Yeah, Stradivox. the Stradivox show. Yeah. So those are the five. Very obscure yes. uh, arcade games as well. Yes, it's exactly. Like it I've fits never in heard with, of them before either. Yeah, so that fits in well with uh, some of the stuff we do. We're always trying to go off the beaten path a little bit some of those games. Right. So that's what that is. So, you know, there's other people that want to do that or, you know, they feel like they want their game to find a new home. Just reach out to us and we'll see if we can come up with something. So. Right. And it's great to have uh, another avenue to yes. release games that may not be able to be released elsewhere. Exactly. So we're kind of, yeah. And you've already had everything set up to for manufacturing and distribution. So it must have been a, a fairly simple transition you to... You would think so. A but yeah, a lot of these things... <laughs> accommodate... Uh, I'm sure Nathan's games. typing on the stream right now. What are you talking about, James? <laughs> it was a lot more complicated than I thought. But, because um, he has to do uh, some of the artwork in the boxes and incorporate... Yeah, we have to, yeah, we have a template. We have the printer that we have to get things set up for. And there's colors that have to be matched. We had to change, you know, some graphics had to actually be changed. Um, and possibly different types of boards that you may have to encounter in the future yeah, that you more. haven't done with your games. Yes, exactly. Yes, that's yeah. been a challenge, to say <laughs> least. So, yeah. uh, having a 30, like, Ruby Cube is a 32K melody board. Yeah. So that one's just like, you know, same as my other ones. All the other ones were different. Exactly. <laughs> that's a nice way to say it. So, different. Yeah, Challenging. Exactly. So, yeah, so we're hoping, you know, we're trying to keep things so that's things that we can actually publish, so that's good, so. Yeah. Oh, Nathan is there. Hey, okay. all I've been watching just couldn't chat over Apple TV, so I guess he hopped okay. on his phone now. Okay, that's cool, so. Uh, let's see, any other questions? Ruby, VHSC says Ruby Q is a great game. Good to see it has a new home and available to buy again. Nathan Strump says, yeah, not so straightforward with some of the publishing. Yes, exactly. It's, uh, there we go. That's why we only have one game released this year, because I was supposed to have Spiders done, but... Oh, okay. I mean, as Dave, I was like, I'll give you a playable demo in May, in June. It's coming, in, and he didn't get it until I actually was getting on the plane. I went, I finally got something that's playable. Well, so it's not so bad, because you do have two Tacoma Arcade, yes, two exactly. Tacoma Arcade to show off and yeah. sell to people, so you're not just like, nothing new. Yeah, so we're hoping that, you know, we streamline this publishing because everything is last year was new for publishing this yeah. year was new for champions presents yeah you know and just working One with different developers and artists is it's not it's challenging it's because it's different you know time zones different countries different everything so yeah well um, you are the champ of games so yeah. i'm sure so i guess there'll be no bit, problem so. in the future yep absolutely so <laughs> so that worked out pretty well and then zebus is actually different so that's not going to be a champions presents that's something where i talked to oh um chris and he asked he asked if Champions would finish the game for him. Oh! So, and so it's, a, so it's a, kind of a collaboration. Yeah, so obviously he's still lead developer. Yep. We're going to champify it. I don't know if that's a word, but it is now. Yep. Yeah, so it's going to have the Champions the logo, the startup screen, same type of... Uh, um, nice. As you saw in um, what we posted, uh, yes. the screenshot. So it has the Champions copyright, and we'll put in all the features that come along with the Champ game, whether it's... Uh, well, that's great. Yeah, that's multiple, even better. Yeah, multiple players, safety, support. Um, multiple uh, players on screen at the same uh, time? Probably not. Okay, I thought not. I was like, yeah. oh, But yeah, oh. one or two player, and yep. then uh, safety, then uh, challenge mode. And yep. I was talking to Chris about something I had about for um, you know, extra levels of bonuses and stuff like that. So. Well, Xevious was amazing already, so I can't yes, imagine. Exactly. <laughs> so one of the things is that he wanted to put in the uh, the mothership, it's called the Andor Genesis thing, but he's yep. out of ROM at 32K. So the first thing right. that is on my plate is uh, expanded to 64K, yeah. Champify it with all our menus and stuff like that, and yep. then we'll fire off, um, you know, then we have his game, and then we will add in the uh, mothership, and then that'll give us a little more space to put in some other cool things as well. Yeah, so. RC70 likes the term Champify. Oh, okay. I good. think it's caught on already. Good, okay, good. So <laughs> let's, let's let's get that, hashtag it, or whatever you need yeah. to do, whatever Trade you kids market. do these days, exactly. Yep. <laughs> that one, it's a viral. Hashtag <laughs> Champify. <laughs> so, so yeah, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, and we have, Yeah, we have a couple other games that we're working on, yep. as you always do. When, yep. Once that dual second game, I was, yeah, Mentioning. I still don't know what that yeah. is. So that one um, it's, will it, be the next one we're working on, and then a couple others. Ripoff, you know, where right. Nathan's done all the sprites. He's actually done all the sprites with four of the games. 
it yeah. was just me trying to get more time to develop things. So it's not the other Spider game, is it? The dual Black Widow. Black Widow. No, that well, that's an amazing. Atari property. So damn it. Yeah. So. Well, maybe somebody will release it over there. Yes, exactly. I hope they do. Yeah, now well, they can. You know, we do have a working relationship with Atari as well. We did the Caverns of Mars, so it's that's not right. out of the realm possibility that we may do some games that are developed by Champ Games, but almost like a GCC type situation yep. where we develop them, but they get published under um, Atari. So. Well, that's great because they've got a, probably a lot of properties that nobody else but Champ Games could make yeah, on the 2600 exactly. yeah. Yeah. with your sprinkle of magic. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, so, well, thank you very much. So. so it's great. There's lots of avenues now yes, for people exactly. to publish their games on Atari, Atari Age, Champ Games, and others yep. as well. That's good. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a Booming business, as they say. So. <laughs> That's right. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, Atari 2600 yeah. is back. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like it never left. It's like, we're it never, completely, it really never we're completely OP. That That's means overpowered, right. by the way. I yeah. didn't know that. Nathan had to teach me that. So completely overpowered. Yeah. yeah exactly. So I thought it was original poster. That's what I thought yeah. too. I went, what does that mean? Yeah, goes, we're too I, old. Get with the times. You know, That's hashtag. right, Grandpa. Get yeah. with the times. But then I asked my son Joey. That's Joey, by the way, over there. Oh. Yeah. He knows. <laughs> yeah. So he went overpowered or no? Uh, that makes okay. sense. So yeah. as long as it's uh, well, it's great catching up. Yeah, and absolutely. Talking so. about your new games and very looking forward to playing Spiders Arcade on the show. Yes. Yeah, Are so you going to come on soon? Come yeah, on the show we can play we have that. October 11th, right? Don't we have a That's right. It is scheduled. We've already scheduled for it. Be November there or 11th. Be square. A couple weeks. Yeah, so that'll give me a couple weeks to polish up uh, yeah. Spiders Arcade. Then um, you'll have Tutankham, which make sure you get before we leave. We'll, we'll be wearing that. the shirt. Yep, on so we'll the show. figure that out. And if anyone that's, um, want, didn't make it to the show, we'll be adding Tutankham and all the uh, Champ Games Presents games to our store. Um, Soon? Next, well, yeah, when I get back, I'm going to probably take a two-hour, two-day nap. <laughs> yes, and we'll go we from all there. will. Yeah. Um, but also, we'll have digital ROMs for all these games as well. So, oh, um, great. Yeah, so, for Tutankham as well? Yeah, Tutankham and RubyQ. And, um, oh, you know, great. And we worked it out with these others. So. Well, there's a bonus being with Champ Games. Yeah, exactly. Get, so get it'll the have digital the same, binaries. Yeah, so they'll have the same type of situation where you can get the ROM with the cart and get discounts on that. Oh, so. that's great. So, yeah. yeah, so we're trying to fit everything into a, it's not a mold, but, you know, just so everyone's... So you know what to expect when yes, you go to you Champions, go there, what you can get. Blah, 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 so, so yeah. it'll be good. So, and that'll be the same for CVS and their all the game. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because yeah, I always see in the forums people wanting, Where's, can I purchase the ROM, can yep. I purchase the ROM? Yeah. The answer is yes, yeah. you and can There's going to be no restrictions as far as we don't wait three months for the ROM. It's going to be for day one, you can get the box version, you can get the yeah. unboxed version of the car, or you can get the ROM. And then yeah, because I know in this community people love buying the boxes. Yes, so exactly. They've already made up their mind beforehand. Yeah, that's what, what we figured out. So at this point, so we, you know. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So. Yeah. But anyway, so thanks for taking the time. Thanks. Well, thanks, Don. Thanks for talking so, with us, John. Yeah. So it was good to see you guys. So. Yeah. Yeah. You get stopped by. I don't know if you want to. Yeah. Hey, you guys done screaming? Is this it? Or my? Was that? No, that we got we got some more. Oh, you got John yeah, Hancock and those guys. Yeah, so. John Hancock. I told Don to say hello. And Songbird. So. Okay, yeah, he's right here. Right? Yeah, you're all in like this small exactly. little area. It makes it really simple. Yeah, so it's very actually, nice. So. To okay, walk good. Feet. Yeah, so great talking with you. Yep. And uh, we'll see you on the 11th. Yeah, stop by and I'll give you your yeah, stuff. Yeah, we'll so, come okay. back. Okay, guys. Yeah, see you later. that's behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's give this uh, microphone. Actually, I'll hold it. Okay. Uh, we're going to uh, present John with something coming up that uh, we're actually able to do this because we're here and we're sending out the Atari Homebrew Awards. So we thought, let's bring the Atari Homebrew Awards to John. And so we'd like to present John with his... What is this? Best Homebrew Port Award to John Champo for Elevator Agent, which oh, is available wow. here. There you go, there's your certificate, there's your award, and here's the uh, red envelope okay. that uh, we presented it on yes. the Atari Homebrew Awards. So kind congratulations, yes. John, on winning that well-deserved award. I'd like, like to thank, um, who, who made this game with me? Uh, uh, um, 
<laughs> that other guy? Yeah, uh, exactly. Nathan. And it starts with an N, yeah. yeah exactly. But who Nathan did the sound? I can't remember his name. I'm throwing a blank. <laughs> oh, uh, should I look it up? Oh, Pat Brady. Oh, sorry. Right. Start again. Who would you like to thank? Okay, I'd like to thank myself. <laughs> Firstly um, and mostly. Wait, oh, John, you're, you're awesome. <laughs> I know. You do um, great work, John. Exactly. I'd also like to obviously thank Nathan, who did amazing graphics for this. Yeah. And, of course, uh, Pat Brady, who did the amazing um, sound as well and yeah. all the game testers you know who you are because yep. I don't um, <laughs> but I won't Me. remember yeah, I think James was one of them bit. maybe yep. Steve I don't know oh, Steve probably yeah, for sure Jurgen definitely um, McAllister a um, bunch of guys uh, yeah. Machine all you guys you know I love you um, <laughs> let's do it again next year okay that's all I got yeah. I'm sure there's more and of course all the other guys that helped um, contribute of course to so congratulations again yeah, thank you it's, I appreciate it's actually it, so. awesome to be able to give this to you in person. Yeah, I've never wonderful. been able to do it before. Exactly. It's a first. Yep. And thank you, Tanya, for <laughs> Yeah, Tanya made the uh, yep. awards right there. Exactly. Very shiny, <laughs> very sparkly. <laughs> She'll show off her award for sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> okay, perfect. So we'll talk with you soon. Okay, we'll see absolutely. you on the 11th. Yep. Online. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Bye, Thanks. John. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yeah, no, I you have anything to say, line. Paul? Um, who would you like to thank? <laughs> My brother. He's 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 the man. He's the know. best, isn't he? I mean, I have a you know nepotism, you know, but his games are awesome. So yeah, they are. So so uh, we had you know we had uh, Eugene Jarvis over here who did Robotron. Oh yes. Um, so he so we were, I brought him over and showed him um, co-op mode. With two guys on the screen at the same time. Oh, that's a, that's so, awesome so, to have so, you So team. it's me and Chris are playing, and I die. I'm blinking for three seconds. He tags me in. <laughs> so the only way we die is if we both die. So right, I had him right. do it. So Eugene Jarvis was playing. He was mad. Look, he was doing this. He goes. A controller I just built two days ago. Oh, he's like, I'm like, oh my gosh. That's I why hope I built it strong. That's, right? that's why he's the um, Robotron guy. But then yeah. you could always say it was broken by Eugene. Yeah. That's you know. true. But when we Even that being honest, then you'd have to get him to sign it. Broken right. by. But you know? But what we love <laughs> you about these games, you know, we, we, we clone them first and we have champ modes. You know, when you're younger, you say, oh, I wish this game did this. Yeah. With John, he makes it happen. That's so, right. Champifies it. Yeah, champifies. Good, good. So, yeah, Eugene signed off on the uh, Co-op mode, so that's awesome. You can't get any better. What an honor to have you here. He's authoritative on Robotron, right? He Amen. really is. You got it. What he did he like it? He loved it. Oh yeah, he loved. Well, oh, yeah, it's an he's amazing doing game. this. I wish I had that on video. Uh, oh, that would have been good. Anyway. Okay, no, well, we'll see you online. Talk booth. to you later. You guys do great work. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Maybe. Let me try that out. I have a. I have a really weird question for you. Are you Canadian? Yes, we are. Did you hear the accent? Are you Sumerian? Uh oh, way back, Am going way video? back. Oh, well, you're talking to me. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> okay. Well, this is live, so. Oh yeah. shit! It's all live right. too. Not That's even just. Yes. Yes, I am. That's crazy. Did you recognize the voice or I something? I recognize your face. Oh, the face. Yeah. So, what is your online name? Um, or what it was it? Variable. <laughs> Variable. I don't remember. Yeah, no, that no, one. but patrolling. I watch patrolling. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's me. That's yeah, cool. doing video games. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. So that's uh, that's our streaming show. We uh, do. Um, uh, homebrew games at, oh for Atari God. systems. Yeah, so you're just talking, <laughs> just talking to John. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You so cool. if you want to see what I'm doing now, zero oh, page homebrew. Zero page homebrew. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Do you have a sticker <laughs> to give? Dude, yeah. Just to Rant remind media, you. Rant Media. Rant yeah, Media. Yeah. Rant Media. Yeah. Hell there yeah, you go. Yeah. Awesome. Good to meet you, man. Yeah. Great to meet you as well. Likewise. Enjoy the show. Hey. Yeah. Past lives. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, let's talk to Carl. Do you want to oh. Well, I've caught the eye of Carl. Yeah. Hey, Carl, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? Good, here, take the microphone. A little right. bit easier with the separation there. I feel very official now. Yeah, you've got the official microphone. Coming to you live at That's PRG right. 2024. Chaos, uh, alarm <laughs> systems going off. Alert, fire, alert, fire. we have invaders. <laughs> Actually, there was a fire here, not a fire, but a fire alarm there was here a fire yesterday, alarm. and everybody cleared out. I almost wish I was, I was uh, broadcasting during it, just to catch the <laughs> chaos of it, but we weren't. Right. Yeah. That was, that was uh, unfortunate, a little bizarre. And, how uh, was that for you? You had to vacate? We did. We were, I mean, a lot of the vendors waited because we wanted to make sure everybody cleared out at, you yes. know, so the booths could be covered up. That's right. Um, so that was, it was kind of weird because you don't know what's going on and if there's yeah, an actual fire or if it's like outside the building or a different part. Because I couldn't part. hear 
because there was so much chaos, I couldn't hear what the announcement was saying. It was like, is this a, an attack by somebody? Right. Is there? No, it, is it just fire? Is it a right. false alarm? I was like, oh my god, what's yeah, happening? So fortunately, there was no uh, real incident, but it was about a 45-minute delay, I think. Yeah, and I mean, for the people doing the talks, that, that was unfortunate. Sucked a lot. Yeah, yeah, and I was just about to go into a talk. But it didn't throw it off too much. But sure. Anyway, we're here at Songbird <laughs> with Carl. Um, great to talk to you again. Yeah. About uh, Atari and other releases. Right. So, what do you have here for Atari that uh, would be interesting for our viewing audience? I know sure. Microvaders is coming up still. That is coming up soon. Yep. So yep. I know that's something you and I talked about before at a prior yes. show. Yeah. So Microvaders for the Atari Lynx. It's a you know a vertical shoot 'em up game. I don't have I have a picture of it, but I don't have. A, a game here to yeah. sell, but yeah. that will be going on pre-order soon. I know you got to test it on your stream yes. a while ago. Very exciting. Yep. I, I love the game. Cool. I can't wait Thank to you. get my hands on the final version of the game. Right. So that'll be out. I'm expecting November this year. Okay. The very actual soon. release. Very very soon then. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then uh, another new game also coming out in November, which again we don't have here right now the show, but <laughs> yeah. uh, Ring Flyer. So uh, this which is I a, don't know much about. So yep. So Ring Flyer is the first new independent release for the new on DVD system in 20 oh. years. Wow. Okay, so no one has made any games for this in forever. This is going to be an actual release on factory press discs, you know, not burned copies. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and it's it's kind of like the bonus level in Tempest 2000 where you're trying to, like, navigate these rings that are coming towards you. I've, and I've always liked those types of games. Yep. So it's like that. It's kind of, it's very... It can be relaxing and frustrating at the same time. You're like, oh, this isn't very hard. And then all of a sudden, the ring starts zipping around on the screen. You're like, okay, this is yeah. impossible. <laughs> yeah. My favorite one is in the game uh, Aliens. If you've ever played that, there's okay. it's like a multi-stage system. And the first one is the rings. And you're navigating your ship down to the planet to oh, fight sure. the aliens, I see. right? Yeah. Yeah, so I love those types yep. of games. So that's really exciting. Yeah, so it is fun. We're excited that uh, the new one is even more obscure than the Lynx and the Jaguar stuff I've been doing. <laughs> I'm a, Why do you take this I'm kind of stuff I'm a for on? punishment. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So, so but, what kind of uh, audience is there for the new one? Is it like uh, a super dedicated hardcore audience? It is, I mean, which is similar to the other Atari platforms. But, you know, you're talking 100 to 200 fans that are pretty active and passionate right. about new releases. So I guess you um, know how many to make... Uh, so you don't right. overproduce or underproduce because you're Correct. Yeah, very I mean, embedded into the community. That's the right. New one community. Yeah, and so that's why I'll open pre-orders uh, basically early October. Yeah. You know, probably six to ten weeks before the actual production happens. So yeah. there'll be some time for me to kind of see what the response is like. But I'm expecting it'll pay off in the end. I think fans are excited that there'll be a new game coming out, and it's a decent yeah. game. It's not just a, a quick like a you know a little whatever demo turn game or something. Right. It's not a demo. It's not just a, a five minute game. It 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 looks really nice. So on the probably my audience doesn't know what a new one is because I'm very unfamiliar. I mean, you sure. filled me in, but yep. a quick rundown of what the new one was. So the new one was or a is. DVD based system. It's essentially DVD players with an extra uh, processor in them to handle the multimedia games and then they put controller ports in the front of the DVD player. So basically right. you could walk into an electronic store back you know, 20 plus years ago uh, and be able to buy a Samsung player, a Toshiba yeah. player and someone would say Nuon and they'd have these little controller ports and then you knew it would right. play games. It was a it was a novel idea, but it just didn't catch on. You know, most people look at it and said, "This is just a more expensive DVD player. Why do I want to pay extra for a DVD player?" Yeah, they see two on the shelf, yeah, right? And right. I think that a lot of companies were trying to do that as well. They're putting like Mega Drive slots and interchangeable sure. slots into multimedia. It was centers. kind of that era, like when before. Like, or maybe it was right around when PlayStation was also uh, moving to like supporting Blu-rays on their system. So yeah. they kind of did it from the other side, where they said, well, we're a game system, but we're also going to let you play Blu-rays. Yeah. And here was you could buy a DVD player that could also play games, but it basically never took off. They only released yeah. about seven games retail, and then the thing crashed. Yeah, so they, they got on the right side of it. They're like, this yeah, is a game Sony system yeah. that <laughs> plays... I think DVDs, that worked out yeah. better in the end. It seems to have been. <laughs> They're still around. Yeah, I think I've heard of them. Maybe. <laughs> so what else uh, would you like to highlight here sure. that you're selling? Yeah, I can show a couple things I do yeah. have here at the booth. Um, so this is Towers 2 Enhanced. This is a game that came out last year, yep. but it's been very popular with Jaguar fans. So uh, this game came out actually in the late 90s after Atari had kind of abandoned the Jaguar market. Yep. But then... Um, the developer approached me about a year and a half ago and said we'd like to make a remastered version of this game. Very nice. They put a lot of time and effort into it and uh, you know, enhanced the frame rate, added new textures, uh, tweaked the puzzles to make them a little more accessible to modern players. And the end product is great. I've been very happy with that one. 
Uh, we have a couple of uh, unique games here, which I'll uh, I'll show you the sign. Might be a little easier to see than the the baggies here. But, oh yeah, get the reflections um, off. Yeah. Right. So uh, what do we have? Star Streak and Protector Resurgence. So Protector Resurgence is a CD expansion which I had released for Protector ten years ago. Actually, oh, okay. this year. Yeah. And so this is the first time I've actually taken that CD expansion content and bundled it directly on the cartridge. So well, you don't need a CD more player. That makes it more accessible because right. the CDs. That's what I thought. Like if you look around here and the prices of the CD add-ons with the Jaguar, you're like, oh. Oh my god, just the Jaguars now are expensive, but it's yeah. great that you're making this more accessible to people who just have the base system. Right, absolutely. And then Star Streak is an overhead, uh, you know, like meteor, asteroid shooting kind of game for the Jaguar. Again, it's been pretty popular with fans, so I've been happy with the response on that one too. Mm -hmm. How to describe the new one? Tempest 3000, uh, Cyrano says. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yep, Tempest 3000 is probably that, the reason people that's the have a new system, system. It is. Yeah, it's very good. Um, you know, there's a couple of games on it that are good, considering the library is so tiny. <laughs> I mean, it has Iron Soldier 3, which also came out on PlayStation. Right. But it's a very competitive version of the game. So its hit to miss ratio is quite good. Yeah. Yeah. And then it has a Merlin racing game, which is like a kart racing, you know, a kind of game. But it's it's well done. It's a, a you know good frame rate and cartoony characters and stuff like that. So it's yeah. a well done kart racing game. And VHC says I see some Evercade stuff there. That's one of my favorite systems these oh, yeah. days. So maybe Evercade. let's come around here and talk about the Evercade. Sure. Briefly. So I'm a reseller of the Evercade. I got into it a few years ago because I actually licensed some of my games to them. So okay, that, that's the connection. That cartridge is now out of print, but on Atari Lynx Collection One. Uh, you know, like three fourths of the ROMs on there came from Songbird. Okay. So uh, that, that was great, and that was kind of my inroad with them. And then I said, well, is there a way I could get involved to be a reseller of the Evercade system? Because I didn't really see much of that happening in the U.S. Yeah. Because uh, they were based out of UK. Oh, okay. And I, and they said, yeah, let's work out something. And so I've been selling for the last few few years, and it's been great. It's uh, definitely brought a, a different segment of customer base my way that are very grateful right. to have a U.S. based. Uh, seller they can buy from. So they, uh, a lot of these are, some of them are older games and some of them are newer games. I see Sydney Hunter, yep. I see Attack of the Petsky Robots on here. Yeah, there's been some, or like Good Boy Galaxy and Witch and Wiz, those are kind of newer yep. independent releases. So it's uh, it looks like a great system for somebody who has their foot in both worlds. If you enjoy uh, collecting retro games, yep but you want something that's a little more affordable, but still physical. It's not just a pure emulation route. It yes. is emulation based, but you actually get a physical cartridge with yeah. each of the set of games. I think that's the real hook, because yeah. I'm a physical guy. Obviously, I make me, Lynx carts. Me too as well. I make yeah. Jaguar carts. I collect Atari 2600 carts, right? So I, yeah. I like the physical part of it. And this is a nice uh, kind of bridge between modern and old, as far as yeah. you, you can get the old games, but now you're getting a physical cartridge that is yours to keep. You don't have to worry about licenses being revoked or anything else. Yes, and that, that's my <laughs> attitude is if I don't have it in my hand, and it's not real. It right. can disappear the next day. Even if it's like downloadable add-ons, they don't, they don't exist to me. Sure. You know, the, my system crashes, it goes away. The server goes down, it goes away. The only thing that's left is what's on the cartridge. So yeah, yeah I'm a big Absolutely. fan of, of uh, physical media as well. Yep. So it was great talking to you, Carl. Yeah, you too, James. And, uh, always nice to see you. Always great to see you as well. You too, Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, good luck with the rest of the uh, expo. Thank you. Yeah, and see you around. All see right. you online. <laughs> so right. we're going to head over to, I think, see probably our John? last booth. I think so, John. See you around. Yeah, I think he's in the next aisle, John Hancock. Yeah, so we'll jump over an aisle. Uh, let's see. We'll keep our eyes open. <laughs> the gimbal is given up. Oh no. Well, that's good we're on our last person. Because I don't know if we'll be able to talk to anybody at Atari. Uh oh. Oh. Let's go one more down here, because I know he's very, very close by. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah, wandering a little bit. Yeah, another thing I would have been Really don't remember him being this far. I thought he was this far. Okay, I'll well, keep going. Uh, yes. <laughs> Don't remember it being this far. I'm pretty. I swear he's in that other section. <laughs> Press the map button. <laughs> Press pause, and the map will come up. You see him? No. Oh. Oh no. He's not in his booth. But let's just show off his games anyway. Sorry, John. Because we wanted to show off the uh, new Atari 7800 Blockum Sockum. So this is made by uh, Daryl Ganther, who we talked to earlier at the Atari Age booth, and we've shown this on the show before. Excellent puzzle game. Uh, now also available on the Intellivision, too. There you go. So there's the Intellivision version as well. There we go. Oh, it's unfortunate he's not here. We did come rather late. So. It, yeah, we did. That's okay. So let's do a little walk back to the uh, Atari booth. And I would love to talk to somebody at Atari if that's possible. Uh, to talk about the homebrew games coming out from Atari. Uh, specifically Pac-Man Plus's game uh, that are going to be released in November. They're uh, releasing a whole slew of his games on cartridge including Bounty Bob Strikes Back. But Yeah, I wanted to talk to Ben Jones from um, Play On, so we'll see if he's there and we can talk to him about uh, some of the new releases on cartridge that are, uh, I think, for pre-order now. Luckily, it's uh, very easy to find our way back to Atari, because they have the biggest, tallest booth in the whole place. I don't see Ben, but I do see Al. Yeah. So I think we might end up uh, finishing up with Al, actually. You did what? Oh, there you Okay, okay. Right. I, I thought he was going to sell the new two on the Mr. Russo, do you have a moment to get, walk back to your booth and talk about PRGE? Yeah, let's walk to the bathroom <laughs> and then walk to the booth and we can talk. All right. Oh, That's boy. Where I was headed by oh, okay. Right. Yeah. But I don't want you to really tell me in the bathroom. <laughs> Unless you want to no, I, I think we might be kicked off. Do you do that? Alright, uh, so if you want to meet me over there, yep. it's just going to be a minute because well, I just had a sandwich in my hand. Oh, oh yeah. Seat. Okay, so, we'll hang around there. Alright, I'll be over there. Now. You bet. Um, maybe we can talk with Matt? I'm not sure. We might be able to. Okay. Which full day really some overlap here, but I'm just thinking about it. It's a small device, right? It's basically designed to carry the box. Ten, you can pan around uh, the Atari booth. about coming uh, 7800s from Bob Dad
Awesome. We can talk, we can talk about the hardware a little bit. So like yeah, that too as well. Yeah, yeah, no Excellent. Problem. Okay, come All on right. over. Do it. Hey. So we're here at Atari with uh, Matt Burnett. Yes. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about um, some very exciting stuff coming out from Atari, actually, uh, for this 7800. Our friend uh, Pac-Man Plus, Bob Decrezenzo, yep. is going to have the first Atari 7800 game in 33 years coming right. out from Atari. Bounty Bob Strikes Back. That's yes. really, really exciting. Oh, absolutely. And not in addition to that, we also have Bentley Bear's Crystal Quest that packs in with our new 7800 Plus. Another and, excellent game from Bob. Incredible game. We saw that, and it just made sense for that to be the actual sequel to Bentley Bear's Crystal Castle. Yeah. And so we approached Bob and said, hey, would you be interested in potentially packing it in with some of our new hardware? Of course, yeah. you know Bob. He's such a nice guy. <laughs> oh, we love so working nice. with him. He yeah. was like, yes, ab absolutely, let's do this. So. You know, we, we believe that the community has made such great games over the last 20 years that any time that we can grab those and elevate it underneath the Atari brand and bring those to our products and to our global audience yeah. makes a ton of sense because that yeah. is such a good game. Bounty Bob is another one. Yeah. I mean, he's done Asteroids Deluxe, many other fantastic so titles. So many, so many. Yeah. Unofficial mascot almost yeah. of Atari. That's right. Um, we're bringing back the bear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's great to see, you know, the homebrew community help extend the Atari, keeping keeping the limelight on it and keeping Absolutely. the name alive. And now Atari's back. And it's great that you're able to incorporate what the homebrew community has been able to accomplish. Yeah. And the great strides and what they've been able to push oh, these systems to do. It's incredible. And, and one of the things that we changed between the launch of the 2600 Plus and our new 7800 Plus is we updated the firmware so that so there was more yes. expanded com compatibility with all these great community-made games. That's because, right. You know, with all the stuff Al's doing over there at Atari Age, which is fantastic, yeah. we want to be able to put those in our machines and have them play no problem. That's um, right. So it is very important that we are actively supporting the community that way. Yeah. And vice versa. I mean, they, they tell us when yeah. we get something wrong or hey, you can fix this here, and, and they yes. and they tell us where we do better. Six, 2600 plus if they want the to play the systems and this makes it accessible it does to play it does. not only the homebrew but the old school games as well that's right uh, be able to hook it up to a new tv because you know people collecting for the 2600 they buy it say a console here this <laughs> up and they go in the forums but you're making it easy absolutely we to can. get new people interested in the atari or people that used to play the atari back in the 80s absolutely yeah. i mean at the end of the day if you want people to play great games you have to provide them with a platform that supports that and you simply can't rely on rely on 40 year old hardware expect right yes um, that was critically important but now that we have two consoles and markets we're able to accelerate our pace of game releases a little bit because we yes. have platforms to support them. So yeah. you'd expect to see a lot more games coming from Atari over the next several years. Yeah, because I was really excited when you announced Mr. Run and Jump. I'm like, oh my god, okay, this is not, you know, Asteroids again. This is not, you know, this again, this again, this again. It's a game, a homebrew game being released. I was hoping, hoping what you're doing now would happen. Yeah. I, so this is a really exciting time for the homebrew community. Like some of of our own people being recognized by Atari and bringing it to the forefront to a big stage. Yeah, and, and to your point, Mr. Run Jumping is a great example of this. It was somebody who was passionate and made this game in their own time. Yeah. They brought it to us fully made in assembly language. Yes. Um, we yeah. looked at that and said, this is so incredible. We would love to get this on a cartridge. And then we also made a modern version of it. So That's right. we actually released it not only on PS5, Xbox, you know, the Switch modern platforms, but on physical cartridge as well. So yeah. we see opportunities in the future to maybe continue doing things like that. That's right, because so, some of these programs are not only just 2600 programs, they program in their daily lives for their jobs. That's right. So they can make extensions Absolutely. and upgrades and better Absolutely. graphics for the most modern systems. So for sure. you're able to support people from 1977 to 2024. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> a, few, a few difference in graphics there, but you know, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah but exactly. the gameplay is fun no matter what system you're on. Exactly. Exactly. It's, it's important to keep the spirit of the game yeah. um, and just choose what graphics level you enjoy. Um, That's right. Yeah. I mean, we've got Mighty Morphin 
Power Rangers playing back there. Yeah. Um, we have a, a new Fatal Run uh, that we're showing over there. I mean, there's so many opportunities for us to to do these releases on multiple platforms. So it's very That's exciting. Right. So you're honoring the past and pushing forward to the future. Absolutely. Well, it was great talking with you, Matt. Thanks, and man. uh, great to talk with you again in the future. Appreciate it. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, we're gonna head over to uh, Al, if he's back. Let's see. Oh, no. Uh, not too bad, but if anyone uh, needs to reboot, if things are out of sync. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just, just wanted to mention that. Let me hook back up. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. YouTube should be better here, too. Well, it actually won't be better because I'm not recording locally. So yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're doing it through cell phone, and there's variability within the building, it's so... It's kind of going all over the place. There's Is not that, a lot we can do about it. Yeah, it's tough. So let's just uh, head over to the booth here at Atari Age. And, uh, I don't know, let's, let's talk to David Page. Oh, no one wants to talk to me. Sure they do. They do. Suckers. There you go. Have a microphone. Suckers. While we wait for Al to come back, you're you're holding down the fort here, right? I'm Al Jr. <laughs> Al Jr. Uh, right now you are. Yeah. The Al stand-in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's Al. Oh, I'm gonna get the mic <laughs> taken away from me. I probably have COVID. I had my uh, moment of glory. It took one it. second, a moment oh of glory. Oh my God! What is this? Oh, we've upgraded. Is this real or is this it's like a full mic? It's actual. Real. Testing, testing. It's got it's got uh, one of these little things in the top. Okay. So, so you it don't is have a real mic. Thing anymore to people, which is nice. <laughs> how close do you really want it? Can you uh, even tell? You're not even doing a sound check. This. Yeah, you're good there. All right. So Al, we're live reporting from Portland, Portland Michigan, PRG Expo. 2024. That's right. <laughs> Big uh, radio announcer voice. <laughs> so we're near the end. Yes. We're on the third day. If we're near How the end you? for the show, show attendees, that, not that's near the end true. for me yet. It, uh, it continues on after everybody right. clears out. Yeah. See all this stuff? It doesn't magically just pack itself into a box. Although there are matches. <laughs> oh, we That's already had true. a fire alarm once. We tried to God. sell as much as we can, but we're lighting the rest on. It's a fire sale. <laughs> I, you know, I heard that joke enough yesterday. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true with the fire yes. alarm. Um, so how are your feet? How are your my legs? My feet are fine. Really? Yes. Oh, that's I'm, good. I'm, I, I, that, that's fine. That's the least of my problems yeah. is walking around. I don't mind that at all. Being on concrete for basically five days straight now. Yeah. You know, two days sitting in the booth, three days of the show. Yeah. We'll be back tomorrow to collect everything, but that won't be too bad. Yeah. So yeah. the three days of the show is new, and that's an interesting experience. Yeah. So, so how has it been? You is an expanded area. Yeah, I a mean, big with the, booth, with the, huge with the booth. seventy thousand square feet they had last year, and they actually sold it all. So it's, you had the weird open areas like you did last year. And yeah. of course, I've literally not gone beyond on where the llama <laughs> was, which don't even ask me about that. Al doesn't but, know what's in the rest yeah, of the building. Yeah, I mean, I know there's things, there's tables, there's there's games, there's people yeah. that I wanted to talk to, but that ain't happening. <laughs> I didn't get to see all the no. television guys, for instance. I didn't go to see Shampoo's booth. I didn't see, get to see. Just a whole bunch of things. It's it's tough for me too. Like yeah. you know, just I'm sure it's like no, a thousand wait. times worse for you, everybody. Al, Al, Al. Yeah, Al. but come on, you you got to walk around. Though, I did. So mostly to show it off I don't on camera. Hear, I don't want to hear the no bitching. complaining, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm sure you've had fun. Oh yeah. yeah. Always have fun. That's why we keep coming back. Yeah. <laughs> so lots of games sold. Lots of new games yes. come out. Yeah, a lot of new games. Uh, traffic was pretty steady every day. Even Friday, we weren't really sure what to expect. Oh yeah, because the experiment of Friday. Exactly, because the vendor, this vendor hall, at least this portion of the vendor hall, to where the air wall is that you can't see, uh, was open Friday for the first time, noon to 10 p.m. We were yeah. here at 7:30 a.m. to finish setting up, and then closed at 10. Got out here at 10:30, so that was a pretty long day. But actually, a lot of people did stream in in the beginning, and were yeah. right at the entrance. And a lot of people would buy games on Saturday, bought them on the Friday instead. Yeah. Uh, so the Friday sales are pretty good. Saturday sales are pretty good. And Sunday has actually been above average as well. And yeah, I, it's still really busy one, here. Yeah, it is. And I talked to one of the organizers. They said there are about 29% more attendees this year than in previous years. So that's a huge wow. increase over one year. Wow. So, so and it feels like it. I mean, even with does. the even with the additional space, uh, there's still a lot of people walking around in the halls, depending yeah. which where, where you're going. Uh, you, so you expect it to be, you know, spread out more. But man, there's people everywhere. It's, it seems so, the same. It yeah. does. Yeah. You don't really think you realize that they added so much space. It's just crazy. So the so the experiment probably went well. They're probably gonna keep yes. doing Yes, it's gonna <laughs> to be very interesting to see what they do. I've heard all sorts of interesting things. Like they want maybe to have all the vendors be here for three days. 
Okay. Uh, and I have to assume they're going to want to potentially have vendors maybe open to 10 p.m. on Saturday as well when the arcade right. is open. To, I think the, the arcade, vendors are looking I think the at arcade's open until 10 on on Sunday, Friday. Uh, oh, it is 10 Saturday too. Yeah. Friday and Saturday. That would be I, make I a think, really long weekend. Yeah. So, so I, I'm guessing the vendors are going to be like, okay, did we get? 50% more sales because yes. we're open on Friday. If not, why would we do Friday? Yeah, we just pack it's, it's, it's into two days. Work. And there's probably people who can't easily come Friday. Like, yeah. you know, a lot of smaller vendors are just one person. Maybe they have a job. Yeah. And you know, they can't really get off work very easily. That's true. Or they just don't want to be here for three days. All right. And that's, so that's probably knows? why they made the separation escape. These people want to be here on Friday, and well, those people. The choice was <laughs> you can be by right at the entrance, but you have to be here Friday. Oh, or you can be okay. out in outer space, but yeah. you have to, you know, you know. You're not going to have. But this uh, is awesome. You know. Being oh, no, at the great, entrance. Yeah. Well, that's having the Atari H booth. Or, sorry, see, <laughs> I know. I I've said Atari H booth probably 20,000 times in my life, and so it's really, I, really hard to stop saying I, that. I, I reverse them now all the time, yeah. too, because I say Atari more yeah. now, too. So, yeah, I think it's great that Atari's here with that big 14 foot know, structure. This is very yeah. easy to get back to Atari that's H right. because that's all I have to look for. Yeah, and when being right, we well, come right in the entrance there, and that's the first thing you see. Well, hopefully. All right, first thing to you. But that's yep. going to draw your eyes. Oh, yeah. Uh, so that worked out perfect. We were yeah. actually talking about doing a similar thing in the Atari booth, having two towers like that. Oh, Because yeah. we can put then all this merchandise that's sitting here on the tables, oh, we yeah. can then put in on shelves in that room, and it would be much more organized and less cluttered. Maybe next so year. So if Atari's willing to spend the money the to two build towers. <laughs> then we just the ISOR on between them. Whoa, yeah. Whoa. yeah, you could do that. That'd be awesome. Uh, <laughs> Guiding people in yeah, with a laser. Yeah, oh the light. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so and we did we did have a wall here last year, but I didn't want to do that this year. So we I could have a like clear this. view. Open. Well, so we have clear view and path between the two booths. Yeah. And, and amusingly, when the fire alarm went off, people were literally just you know they were streaming through that side and through this corridor to get and out the door. Anywhere so it's kind of they could get out. Correct. Yeah. In an orderly yeah. fashion. That must have been quite a quite an event that for was, you. Very strange. Like, what do we do? Do we well, leave it all? Do we wait? Uh, well, I cleaned out the register. Well, cleaned out the register. <laughs> emptied the register. Grabbed my laptop bag, and we yeah. were just waiting. And we yeah. didn't actually have to leave. We were like waiting at the doors, and they were starting to push everyone out, including the vendors. Right. Uh, but just at the last minute, then someone came. Okay, it's clear. You can start letting the vendors back in. And then, of course, they wanted to verify it. Uh, yeah, tried. everybody had to go through the so bank oh, yeah, check and everything. Yes. Yeah, so, so it that, took a so, while. Well, it, it, you know, it took a while to get people out. It took much longer for people to come in. And thankfully, oh, yeah. it was quite nice imagine. outside. So. Yeah, it is, which yeah. is detrimental. There we go. Right. Let's see how longer we can go. Yeah. But did you cut down the resolution or something? Or no, I just break? restarted it. Yeah. Oh, did you We're just going to push it as far as it can go. All right. Um, so, game sales. People coming in. I know that Jumping at Shadows was gone. Yes, like that, that's one. As it should be. It's, yes. it's unbelievable. First time I saw when Lawrence sent it over to me, I was like, this is this is next level. The graphics and gameplay, the graphics are gorgeous. Yeah, the I music's mean, unbelievable. Yeah, the game itself, the gameplay, the graphics, the, the audio, the, just the atmosphere of the game is really great. Yeah. And you know, we love the music so much, we made a soundtrack CD for it. As, as it well. should be done. Yeah. And uh, there probably will be a collector's edition coming down the road. Uh oh. Uh, we'll have, Sales you know, just plummeted. We had a lot of fun with the XO <laughs> collector's edition. Yes. And uh, we wanted something like that for the Jaguar or for Jumping Shadows as well. And yeah, yeah I, normally Jaguar sales really aren't that great at the show because I mean right. Jaguar's more niche community compared to like twenty. Very expensive or system. Not but, as many people have it. But, but yeah, I brought the, all the copies we brought for uh, Jumping Shadows and Xena Wings are gone. And, Xena Wings uh, too. I thought yeah, that would go as soon yeah, as people started playing. That went it, today. Jumping Shadows went Friday. You know, so that was gone Friday. So yeah. I could have made twice as many games for that. Lesson learned. And it's, when you know it's, it's hard to know. A great it really game. is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then like a Calibus, we finally got this morning. And uh, that sold out within just a couple hours too. Wow. Like 40 copies of that. Well, uh, you like you like when it sells out. Oh yeah, of course. There's yeah. like fewer things to bring home. <laughs> so right. I'm not complaining about that. Yep. All the stuff I bring home obviously can just be sold online and sort of easily enough. A few games on more games on the wheels right away. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we're we're gonna have to pack everything up in a couple uh, hours. Time. Not no, not a couple hours. It's 4:20. Oh, so, what is it, yeah. 5 o'clock? I think it's 5, it's five, today, five I believe. Okay. Yeah. If not 5.30. So very, others. very soon. Yeah. So if you want any games, come That's immediately. Right. But yeah. yeah, good luck. That's right. I keep forgetting this is live streaming. Yeah, that's right. And as, a court, <laughs> as opposed to just a recorded uh, video. But you're going to post this all online, right? Yeah, on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. All right. I saw your interview with Nolan Bushnell here yeah. a little while ago. That, that was, was pretty fun. cool. Yeah, walk, we walked around the booth a bit. Yeah. Uh, and talk, you know, I was going, you know, some background to our age and how we ended up doing games ultimately. Yeah. And uh, you know, he was you know, inquisitive and and uh, you know, asking questions and, and it was that was a lot of fun. Yeah. So I look forward to seeing that. And I know a lot of pictures were taken. And then he was here signing at yeah. the Atari booth. I didn't get to see his talk either. 
Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I have to watch that it was on good. YouTube later. And yeah. then, of course, that goes for a lot of things. Got to meet Jeff Major finally. Yeah. Uh, oh, he's very here, cool. here from Wales. Uh, yeah. So that was great because we worked with him on the Jeff Major Classics. And he worked with Digital Clips on yeah. the Jeff Major collection that they did, which is great. That's awesome. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's great to see it. Just a lot of people, of course, in the community, a lot of developers. Are yeah, here. yeah. Uh, that's why know. I come. I love to talk to the developers yeah. and interview them because you don't get to talk to them in person too often. Correct. And they're spread all over the world. And if you do talk to them, it's like in a Zoom meeting or something, you know, it's, as opposed to it's, it's not, not quite the same. the same. Oh no, not at all. No. Yeah. So this is the, this is the way to go. And I'm glad you're live streaming. It's great. It is. And, uh, it's it's fun. A lot of people say, oh, it's great that you're doing this because we can't get there yeah. this year or something. Yep. And it uh, makes them feel like they're here at least a little bit. Yeah, and it's really nice, especially if you're walking the floor. Yeah, you know, it really it helps give a better sense of scale on what photos will do. It is uh, huge. Yeah, it is enormous. It, I mean, it feels like oh, everything old is new again. Like and, look, and look, Atari. I Atari know, is here. Yeah, I just they're, can't believe they're, it. They're the only booth that has carpeting. So if I <laughs> want it, it nice. might be bothering. That's bothering. You got to get this go. here next time. Oh my God! You know my get the Atari convention Blue. decorating services. Yeah. That idea. Yeah, that's another at least, $20, it, at least in here so, or around around the sales area. Yeah, so people you, are like, oh, carpet. Yeah, you could do a lot. Like if you go to an E3, when E3 was a thing or CES, everything's carpeted. Oh, uh, but it's yeah. so expensive to do. That's oh, why bet. you don't see it a show like this. And to store it as well. That's that's a whole. Well, it's asshole. just a convention decorating service do all that, but they oh. just they they'll bring oh. the rolls of carpet and put them oh, down, and padding it, and everything. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. But yeah, it's money yeah, to do that. Everything so. costs more. Yeah, yeah. Atari yeah. doesn't have the budget that they do. Even though we're part of Atari. Can't go you have crazy. to ask them then. Yes. Well, we, again, like I mentioned, we've talked about you know make, make, making one of those towers, for instance, and uh, which yeah. would be pretty badass. So That'd be we'll cool. see. Yeah. I think we'll, we'll try to make things easier because it is it's a lot of preparation work. It's, it's a, lot, huge. a lot of work getting everything here. There is a lot stored in Portland. Just count all the monitors. I know then. it's a lot. This is by far the, the most we've had. Because yeah. last year with the wall, we just had a row of systems there, one row. But now oh. we've got two islands, so we've got. You know, there's easily twice as many because you've got both sides plus on the ends here as well. That's true. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I still have, I think, 10 more twice as hundreds I could have put out if I had monitors. Uh, but then it's just you have to draw a line somewhere. You do. Um, this is and I don't this think is I've drawn pretty that big. Really? So I, you want to go to bigger? Find well, I just need, yeah, <laughs> maybe rain in a little bit. Yeah, so, this is big. This yeah. is really big. We but it's nice to be able to have a lot of the demos and upcoming games yes, of course. and new games. And yep. you have so many that yeah. you need these many monitors. And the developers are, who are here, like I was talking to Mike Lateau. Mike Lateau. Yeah. Lateau? And, That's uh, yeah, what I, I say. Lateau. I hope and, it's uh, right. <laughs> you know, he, was, he was talking to me about all the great feedback he got for Pop Box Arena. Is that a good right? Yeah, Pop, because my brain's yeah, going. Yeah, Pop Box Arena, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and you know, he was talking to people, watching people play the game, got a lot of great feedback. So, yeah, you know, and, and I was talking to devs, and it's great for them to see physically somebody pick up and yes. play and where they stop playing well, yeah, or they have it. trouble. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Especially with such an early development it's, game like Pop It's like Box a focus group. You just kind of get really, to watch. You're behind the mirror there yeah, and just watch you what you're doing. you got to have a, a two-way mirror exactly. on yeah. the back there and every, yeah. all the developers can watch yeah. people play. So, yeah, I mean, it's great. And then people get to see games they've never never played before. Oh, yeah. Uh, and people and are wondering game, yeah. where these games come from. Although I get, I get fewer and fewer questions about what are homebrew games because I think people... You That's know, I've good. Come to expect them and see them, especially people come to the show year after year. And it's so. kind of blurring the lines. Atari is now releasing homebrew, homebrew games. games. They are. Are they homebrew anymore? That's. I know. It's Atari. It's commercial. Yeah. But some of them started as home. Well, a lot of them start as homebrews. With the exception is, for instance, Bounty Bob Strikes Back. That's, that's new. clearly that's not a That's straight to Atari. Correct. So yeah. that's clearly just you know work for hire sort of. It makes my job at the Atari Homebrew Awards oh. hard. Yeah, I don't we'll, know definitions We'll need anymore. to talk about that. I know. Yeah, it's it, blowing it, it my does, mind. It does blow a line. The same thing with Audacity Games. You know, what, how do you classify those games? So, exactly. I know. I know. It's so, a whole thing. It's yeah. a whole thing. But yeah. it's, it's great that they are supporting the Homebrew community yeah. as much as they are and seeing Bob's games. Yep. At their at their booth coming up in November, yeah, it's it's amazing that Homebrew has held down the fort yep. for decades. Yeah, and kept now, that brand alive. Yeah, absolutely. And now Atari's back to support yeah. the Homebrew games. And speaking of Bob, it's really a shame. You probably already mentioned this somewhere, but yeah, he was going to be here, and then the hurricane, which I've not been yeah. able to follow very much. Yeah, that massive hurricane to. canceled yeah. his flights and he wasn't able to get here. And he was really disappointed about that. Yeah, it would have been know, great to have Bob here and talk yes. to him, especially over at the Atari booth, talk yeah. about his new game. Yeah, but and he was, he was really disappointed because he wanted to talk, because he has met 
you know, some of the people oh, from Atari. Oh, the Atari. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course he knows me and stuff, but he's still, you know, he's got, he wants to see his game at the show, he wants to talk to people. Exactly. You know, it's a social thing as well. As, as it really is. Yeah. You get to meet everybody that you only know online sometimes. Yeah. And, so. uh, yeah, we talked to the developer of Ultra Scuzzy Side. Oh yeah, Joe Grant. Oh my, yeah. 2001 yep. homebrew. That yeah. was such an honor yeah, to I, be able I mean, to go way back in homebrew. It's one of the first times he's actually been here uh, for yes. Portland. Because, yeah, we'd hang out anytime we come here. Because I've known him for over 20 years. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, before, well before he lived in Portland. 23 years since that game, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we helped him with that. He was a, uh, Philly Classic release yep. where it was shaped like, like the label was a hard drive label. Yeah, that was really that, cool looking. Somebody neat, brought yeah. it in to get it signed by him. Oh, really? That's the cool. hard drive label, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I thought you were about to get it signed by Nolan Bushnell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, some oh, of those Lee, things. Did you see Lee's uh, Atari video yes, music? Yes, which is very cool. Oh, and he told God. me that Nolan was talking about the history of the video music and just just all sorts of information. So it was, he was really happy to see it. Yeah. Excited to see it. Someone had a full size pawn cabinet that they had him sign. Whoa. And just awesome. So it's really neat to see all the, you know, the cool, unique hardware. I suppose just yeah. know, more common stuff. And that's like, why you come here. Yes. To PRG. Yeah, so to get the, all those crazy experiences you can't get anywhere else. Exactly. And yeah. I know how Atari is going to top having a booth here with Nolan Bushnell as their first uh, first appearance. So I don't know what they're going to do next year. You couldn't get any better that. than that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so hopefully he comes back, Nolan. Yeah. Year after great. year, since he's part of Atari. He again. is. He's on the board. Yeah. yeah so. Well, yep. thank you so much. You're welcome. For thank always you. supporting ZPH. And thank you for always supporting the homebrew community. <laughs> of course. So. It's an exciting time to be in homebrew. It is. It's, you know. it's really changing so much, yet still staying, staying the same. Yeah, and after, I mean, doing over 20 years, I mean, it's still strong as ever. Yeah. I mean, and you know, other systems that were slower for a time, like the 700, are just, you know, at oh. their prime now, which Booming. is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Booming. It's now is yeah. the time for both Jaguar. And, and Jaguar, 7, yeah. I mean, there's so many 700s here. I've never had so many 700s. Like that whole island, all 700s. And then, you know, quality, this, there's some of these games. are too. Yep. Yeah, so it's, you know, giving the 2600 a run for its money. And now you're doing a television. You're yeah, doing the television floppy really disc funny. releases. Yeah. It's, uh, it's out of control. Yeah, so I think mean, Atari's <laughs> had television hats in their booth. You know, which is, which is really that funny. I don't understand yeah. at all. That just blows my mind. Well, I'm just amused that you know Atari bought the, the television brand IP, and we ended up producing the first Intel in homebrew. Yeah, it was Atari good age, timing. Which was and that's been in the works for a long time, which is kind of funny. Oh, you got to talk about Acolabeth well, a, a Calibet. little bit. Yeah, yeah so Calibeth. That's something I spoke with Richard Carey back in 2021 and asked him permission to to release that on the television, and that was after uh, Oscar Toledo G uh, Nano Chess on Atari Age uh, approached me and said, "Hey, I've got the uh, you know Intel." Uh, the Calibeth for the television is this something we could maybe get permission for? Yeah. And I've known Richard Garrett already previously, having worked at Looking Glass with Warren Spector, and Warren Spector and Richard were friends, so he'd be in the office all the time. And yeah. I had all the ultimate maps on my on my wall, <laughs> one of the walls in my office, so that was pretty yeah. amusing. Uh, and I'd seen him, you know, talking elsewhere as well. Uh, so he said, sure, just give me some copies of the game and a means to play them. So, yeah. I'm, you know, after the show, I need to send him some copies of the game as well as a, an Intellivision. Nice. Uh, I'm gonna get sent him one of the AV ones, AV modified ones, this way he can easily hook Make it up. Make it easy. And yeah. I'm hoping he's. I don't know how often he spends in Austin anymore. Yeah. He used to have a massive a mansion and then another one, which was even bigger. And I don't <laughs> know if he still lives in that or not. But if he is, hopefully I just go give it to him in person, which would be fun. That'd be so, so. cool. And talk right, about well. a little bit about the uh, artwork as well. Yeah, the artwork. Uh, so Dennis Lubay created the original artwork for Calibeth back in 1979, uh, and it was his first commercially paid artwork. Wow. Um, and then, you know, he created the artwork for all the Ultima games that followed. Uh, and, you know, I approached him, I like, think Brad on Facebook, and say, hey, we're releasing a Calibus for the Intellivision. Uh, it would be amazing if you could, uh, we could commission you to create new artwork for the uh, Intellivision. And he said, oh yeah, that'd be great. So, you know, after a few months, you know, he worked on it, showed me yeah. stuff, and, and it looked, the sketch of everything looked great. And when he finished it, you know, you saw the, you know, I don't know if you oh. were able to show it on the screen at all, but. I think uh, I think oh, we did show a box. It was on that the banner fell. I noticed like about some an missing, hour ago, missing I heard banner. the banner fall. Oh, and no. I, it's not even worth putting it back up now. I've never had a banner fall on the show, so that was pretty funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah. yeah, it's right there in that it's, gap. It's such good artwork, I Actually, think it really needs to be made into a t shirt. Yeah, let's let's show it off in big form there. Uh, you know, I don't so know where missing. it went. So I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know where it went. Anyway. I know someone didn't walk off with it. I was going to show the arm oh, here. I'll show you this here. There we go. There. There. Yeah, There's the arm That's gorgeous. an unfolded box. And so, is yeah, this come really with nice. a poster yeah. of this as well? There. 
Yes, it comes with a poster. It comes with a soundtrack CD. Yeah. Uh, it comes with the overlay, of course. So the, uh, full and, treatment. And, yeah. it's a, and it's a, it's a cartridge. The cartridges are, are they're kind of like the Activision cartridges. So we have a oh, much larger yeah. label on. I didn't want to use the small Mattel labels. I've always uh, liked the Activision yes, type and of they cartridges have a nice grip. with the grip. Yeah. Yes, to get to here. Let me get. Oh, back over here. So. Uh, uh, so yeah, Calibus was a lot of fun to finally get out. We were, you know, it's, we weren't able to actually get the cartridges done until the, last night, and then up until 1:30 in the morning, labeling them and gluing the boxes, and then yeah. assembling them this morning before the show opened, and then yeah. they were gone. So, like all this, all those television guys that are out, out back there all oh, came over. Oh, they're salivating, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. They knew it was coming. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then you know, they probably after, sent uh, scouts every once in a while. Was it I know, really. Is it ready? Oh yeah, that up? definitely was happening yesterday <laughs> and, fr and Friday, no doubt about it. <laughs> Especially yesterday, since most of them were here then. Yeah, uh, but it'll do well online, and uh, you know, they, and when I post it in the Ultimate Dragons group on Facebook, those guys will all go crazy about it as well. Yeah. Uh, How many copies Penalty. did you have available? Forty. Oh, yeah. It was gonna be fifty. We were able to forty. Like just just the people behind the Intellivision Revolution booth inside the booth. Yes. They took half of them. That I'm sure. That's absolutely true. Yes. Yeah. Plus copies, some copies for people who couldn't make it. Of yeah. Other Atari age members, people overseas, whatever. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But you know, it, it's it's really one of the packaging's great. This is our first television release. We're absolutely going to do more. There's yeah. so much potential with that system. And yes. the, the homebrew community and the, the games that they've already created in the Intellivision uh, are absolutely it's amazing. It's a big it's community. Remarkable. Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. And they've they've been pumping out great games for years. I mean, I, yes. I don't even know how many homebrews there are in the Intellivision at this point. A lot. And, yeah, there are I, a lot. I, and I, I, I see, wish I could own them all. Yeah, I see it on like Facebook, all new ones yeah, all the time, and absolutely. they look really good. Like yeah. they're doing a great job on it. So I would love to learn how to program on that system. You know, uh, Nanotest has written a book. You know, yes. for, I mean, and there's the Intellivision Basic, which is really capable. Yeah. Uh, and of course, there's the you know strong community already supporting with cartridge shells, boards. Uh, yeah. You know the print. You know we did all set up all the printing and everything, so we got that down. We yeah. did design our own board for this too, but we use uh, Kamikaze 26's uh, cartridge shells. He made those the translucent. Uh, nice. Active in the cartridge trail, so we didn't have to worry about that right now. Nice. So, uh, every, so was, most of the infrastructure was already yes. there. Yeah. That made it easy. But now that we've gotten the one game uh, done, we can get more pretty easily. So, and yeah. I definitely look, look forward to taking advantage of that. And you know, I know those guys were, were looking forward to seeing Atari finally do an Intellivision game. So I bet. So yeah. Fun. So hopefully everyone enjoys it once they can get their hands on it. Well, it looks so, really good. Thank so you. I'm, so I'm looking fun. forward to playing it as well. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> as, as a matter of fact. Because <laughs> I've got an RGB modded Intellivision, so I'm ready oh, to go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that one that we have hooked up over there is S video. Nice. Well, RGB is even better. S video is good enough for me right now, but yeah. RGB is better. Oh, yeah. And next to you, HDMI. So, yeah. Oh, you can get to that pretty easily. <laughs> one to the other. I'm sure you have a bunch of retro tanks and or R, you know, the XRGB minis or whatever. Yeah, Maybe I've got not. a retro tank. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll probably yeah. be selling my uh, XRGB mini because yeah, I, I, I never use it again. And yeah. I have bought more recently a few of those retro tanks also to use on, on flat screen panels. Yeah, so, really handy yes, for these are. old They're systems. Great. They and make it look great. And it makes it easier too with the ones that are already modified. Because, yeah. Because you know, that can run composite rest video into it. So, yeah. 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 Well, Thank you so much uh, yeah. for ending off our PRGE. <laughs> We're pretty much done. Oh, no. Well, not you, not I, but uh, <laughs> no. this yes, open area yeah. is done. The sales floor is done. Yeah, pretty much. And so, thank you guys again you know, for continuing to support the hobby and the, the oh, homebrew community and everything you do and the amount of time you put into it. And I oh, of course. Do. I really it's, appreciate it. It's I an honor a lot of other people to be able well. to celebrate so, yeah. all this amazing output from the yep. community. Yep. We're all one big happy family. Right. And have a safe drive back yep. to Vancouver. We will. So, and yep. uh, I've got my work cut out for me when I get home. That's for damn sure. Yeah, we're going to be <laughs> on laying. many levels. Yeah, we're going to be just feet her up off yeah. the floor for a while. Oh yeah, I definitely need to take a few days off when I get back, and then yeah. before I dive into it, it's not. Yeah, and then game we're going to be again. starting to play all these awesome new games. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I need to load you up with those. Ooh, there's there's a lot of them. <laughs> yes, there are. All right. <laughs> okay, well we're out of here. Uh, all right. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks to Al again uh, for uh, talking with us and making this all happen at Atari Age. And see everyone online. See you uh, online. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Bye, everyone. See you online. <laughs>